insights, analysis by assholes, water cooler commentary for your sports needs. And this episode is brought to you by Comedy Central's Roast Battle Podcast. Now, if you've seen Jeff Ross presents Roast Battle on Comedy Central and thought those comedians were too mean, well, you ain't heard nothing yet. Okay, join Brian Moses and DJ Coach T for Roast Battle Podcast as they give an in-depth look at the hit international TV series, as well as weekly live shows and interviews from the world-famous comedy store in Hollywood, California. You're going to hear some uh, insensitive jokes. You're going to hear some politically incorrect jokes. But every joke you'll hear comes from a place of love. That's a lie. Listen to the (laughs) Roast Battle podcast for all the -the behind-the-scenes action every Wednesday in your podcast feed. Now, let's start the show. I think it's very important. we got a special guest on the show, but I'm going to introduce them in a second. I'm here right now with Akash Singh. Is Kaz here? No, of course Kaz isn't here. Um, (laughs) Why would he show up to an episode? He only shows up to TV shows now. It's very important that we acknowledge. if Exactly. It's very important that we acknowledge uh, a major, major thing that happened to us. We've been doing this podcast for, I think this is a year now. Is this our 52nd a episode? A year is next week. Okay. Yeah. So this is our 51st episode. Um, right now we're taping this on Wednesday, August, no, sorry, Thursday, August, August 23rd. 23rd. 3rd. Alex and I next week have to go to Burning Man. We don't have to, but we are going to Burning Man. And uh, we actually did get the tickets. We'll t- get into that a little bit later. Oh, Alex yes, fucked up. Oh, but it's no, fine. we're getting you into You know that. what? It's okay. We're we'll talk about that. it. Maybe we'll forget to talk about it. <laughs> but uh, just like you forgot about the tickets. Anyway, so, <laughs> but what happened for us is we started this podcast. I, I called Akash a little over a year ago. Yep. And I said, and we've been talking for years about potentially doing a podcast. A lot of you guys don't know this, but for a few weeks in a row, Akash and I would just by ourselves do podcasts that wouldn't even get released. Right. And just to like get in the mood of like talking and find banter and just, yeah. you know, see what it would be like if we ended up kind of doing it. I don't Cuts. know where that audio is, maybe, <laughs> but uh, we get, definitely got to delete that. Let's uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's Imagine a podcast <laughs> that nobody, we knew nobody was going to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine fuck. that. That is, yeah, that is, that would be wild. So, um, it's called talking. But yeah, yeah, I'm gonna shut his mic off. He's getting too confident talking. Tweet that, Alex. I know. Man. Stop tweeting him. He's already talked three times. Just switch the camera angle. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we go. We basically have, we have these conversations. We start doing a podcast. We've been talking for years about potentially doing something together. What is it going to be? Is it a TV show? Is it a podcast? This, that, the other. And I had Akash up, and I'm like, dude, we got to do. I believe we got to do a sports podcast. Yeah, we talked about a sports podcast for a while. And we needed some angle. We needed some angle just to talk our shit. Something to ground us. Exactly. Sports is something obviously we're going to talk about. I thought it was a good angle, or we thought it was a good angle also because it tends to weed out the like sensitive types. There's no such thing as like a social justice warrior Eagles fan. <laughs> <laughs> Right, like it's just sports are a great barrier. Like if I see somebody wearing, maybe you know, that's why Boston is so funny. Because yeah, because they're real. all sports fans. Now, so they, they didn't don't watch give a that fuck. with us. I know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll, but, you'll see what they're talking uh, yeah, about. You'll see what they're talking about. But um, but yeah, that's a, that's a great that's a great point. Is that you you see somebody wearing a cowboy shirt. You know you can say certain words around them, right? Yeah. And they're oh, not going to be like – you can say certain words. Oh, right. yeah, a lot of them. A lot of those words. <laughs> <laughs> like when a certain player might drop a pass. You might hear those words. <laughs> so the point is we're having these conversations. We say, fuck it. We're going to do a podcast. And I think it really clicked for us after we did an episode of Brilliant Idiots with, with Kaz. Kaz. I remember texting you because mm-hmm. we were looking for a third. Yep. And I said, what about Kaz as a third? There it is. So you put it out there. We did this podcast, and we got to shout out Premium Pete, because I was supposed to do an episode of Premium Pete right? that time. But Charlemagne wasn't there for the episode. Right. So Premium Pete would, didn't want to come, because he wanted a big-time Charlemagne episode of Brilliant okay. Idiots. He didn't okay. want just a Schultz episode. Got it. Yeah, he's sensitive. Whoa. He's sensitive. Yeah, I know, I know. Premium no, he's, he's going to act premium. like it's I don't know not. Who that is, but... Premium Pete be acting mad premium. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you regular Pete to me, man. <laughs> you regular ass Pete. I love Pete. You I love Peter. Pete. I love All Pete. All right, Peter, relax, Peter. Yeah, I love Pete. Pete's a good guy. Pete's a good so, guy. So basically, Alex, you close that door. There's The door is open. And then that will keep you quiet for a couple <laughs> seconds. So, uh, <laughs> appreciate it. So, uh... So yeah, so uh, we got a shout. I love Premium Pete. Shout out to Premium Pete. 
Um, thank you so much for not coming. Because <laughs> if you came, uh, I would end up doing a pot, uh, podcast with you about fucking rigatoni or some shit. But now we're doing starter jackets. Exactly, starter jackets and rigatoni. But I, uh, we ended up doing this podcast. People start to fuck with it. The army starts to grow. I can feel it at the live shows. I can feel it when we're walking down the street and people yeah. chucking up the assholes, etc. And fifty weeks into our podcast run, we ended up having our own TV show on CBS Sports. Yeah. Now, we'll see what happens in the future with this. You know, we'll see if they have a deal that we like. We'll see if, you know, they like the terms that we want, that kind of stuff. We'll see where it goes. But the fact that in less than a year, we built a podcast from nothing and ended up turning it into a TV show and putting it on actual TV. Well, not like a pilot where it's not aired, but it was on fucking TV yeah. yesterday and the assholes could all tune and watch. It's pretty fucking amazing. Uh, so, Akash, I just want to salute you, say thank you for doing this Absolute, with me. man. Thank you for bringing us on. Absolutely. It's about Congrats, time. Congrats, guys. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, we, really did cool. some, we did some cool and shit. And last thank you to the assholes, man. This Word. Is, <laughs> the support was so crazy Dang, last night. Man. I had tweet after tweet, message after message. I was going to respond to everybody, but it was honestly too many people to get to. So, thank you so much to everybody who tuned in, yep. people who sent us screenshots, people who tweeted at CBS Sports. Yep. The support was crazy. It was overwhelming. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Man. And for those of you who haven't seen it, the show is called No Easy Buckets. And, um,. I want you guys to check it out when you can. We'll see when they're going to do a replay. I don't know if they can. We're going to have some clips them to online. Get some clips. Yeah, they, there's a couple YouTube clips of it. And um, But, yeah, man, thank you all so much for fucking with us and rocking with us. And this is what happens now. You know, the game is really flipped on its head. If you have the people – well, actually, this is what I'll say. For years, not only comedy clubs but television networks, they basically said to, you know, the stars of the shows, they said, hey, you have to bring an audience. Right. And it forced us to go out there and curate our own audiences. Right. Yeah. And then once we did that, all of a sudden we started to have some leverage. Yeah. And then networks started to go, well, 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 why are you asking for all this stuff? And it's like, well, you made me get yeah. the people. Now I got the people. I don't yeah. need Yeah. <laughs> now you need me. Yep. So I I really hope we can work something out great over there because the, I'm not gonna lie, I've pre- I've done a lot of TV shows. And the guys we were working with were good at what they did. And they got us. They got us quickly, and they were good at what they did, and they edited to our sense of humor. The little pieces they put together were really fucking good, and they let us rock. Yeah. And everybody's like, yo, how can you be flagrant on, you know, uh, network talk, you know, network TV or whatever like that? Just watch. You're going yeah. to see. Mm-hmm. We're going to find out. We're going to find it. We yeah, sneak yeah, it in. Yeah. Oh, it's in there. It's definitely. Make sure you uh, check out the whiteboard. <laughs> That's another thing I'll say. That's all I'll say. <laughs> but uh, so I just want to say thank y'all so much for supporting what the fuck we do, man. It's been this has been a very cool ride. I'm looking forward to the next step as long as Alex and I make it back alive from Burning Man. Um, so this was a special episode. Again, we're shooting, we're doing this a week early, or a few days early. Yeah. Wait, and when's then it gonna be? It's gonna come out Tuesday. Right. And then the the episode after that is gonna come out. Possibly Wednesday morning, maybe Tuesday night, because Alex and I are going to fly back from Burning Man, and then we're going to come right here and right, record right, right. it. So that episode will, will be late. Um, and you guys will still be high on MDMA. No, no but maybe. That might be wild. Yo, That's I a need, good episode. I need <laughs> to yes. see that. We should come in hot. Come in real you hot. We should to. come in you hot. Have Just have Dwayne set up the board before you get here, Alex, and then invite Mandy. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's let's introduce our guests. We have a very special guest here. Hero. It's a hero, you know? Aww. It's a hero. We have a whistleblower out here. I know everybody <laughs> who's listened to this podcast right now has probably heard the story of, uh, you know, the meet, one of the meet leaders of the Me Too movement, Asia, <laughs> I know, Asia Argento, uh, basically being accused of uh, sexually assaulting or statutorily raping a, uh, a, a kid, a 17 year old when she was 37. Uh, whom a, she knew a kid. when she I'll, was... I'll I'll set you up. Okay. Whom she knew when she was seven years old, <laughs> when he was seven years old, played his mother in different things. Very creepy situation to kind of like raise somebody that you fuck. I mean, you know, wo- only Woody Allen can do that. I basically <laughs> trying to say is, Asia, your films aren't good enough to raise <laughs> the people you fuck. Okay, I haven't heard of a single film by Asia Argento. Okay, Neither I also Woody have Allen's, all, to be I'm, honest. Say what? Neither are Woody Allen. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I haven't really seen Woody Allen's joints. Like, shit's I can't tra- name. The shits are boring. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I mean, you watch them? They're cuck movies. This are is, they really? This is black frame glasses. People can watch them and get bored and pretend they get it. Oh, so it's like faux art- artistic yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, fair it enough. It must be a cuck. So. You like Woody Allen? Yeah, a couple of them. 
A lot of the white girls put you onto it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, so basically, right? So basically, what happened is, <laughs> Asi Argento. I'm gonna take his mic away. I'm literally gonna take his mic away. Shit. Shut the fuck up. I'm gonna tell you. So, th- what does he say? <laughs> <laughs> what was the Mexican that we had in here doing his job? Edin. Edin. And Edin does all those graphics, by the way. Those nice graphics that yeah. you guys like. Edin does that. Mexicans shit. gotta stay they quiet, got fam. That's how they stay here. I'm leaving him in Burning Man. <laughs> so, basically, what happens is, Asi Argento was the widow of Anthony Bourdain. Well, and she came they were out. Never married, but they weren't married. No, yeah. no, no, just a girlfriend. Girlfriend of Anthony Bourdain, but for many years. And after his death, Two years. after his whatever, after his suicide, came out, and she really kind of what some people believe uh, milked it. Well, yeah, milked it. A lot of people were looking at her as like this complete victim, but a one brave soul came out and tried to show how she was maybe milking it, and she wasn't sincere. And maybe she wasn't even sincere about this whole Me Too movement that she was one of the leaders of. And that woman is our guest today, Leah McSweeney. And Leah bravely walked through the fire. She got tons of criticism. You got tons of hate. Women's groups were coming at you. Everybody's coming at you. And literally, a few weeks later, you get your vindication. How sweet is it? Yeah. I mean, it's bittersweet. Go on. It's bittersweet. What do you mean? It's bittersweet because at the end of the day, yeah. there is still a man who is dead. Yes. Right? Yes. And fuck what all these people, fuck all these people that came at me. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't even, I, I don't give a fuck about them. You know, what, what makes me upset is the fact that, like, this woman who was, like, out here with her, like, fucking fist up in the air, um, acting like this this self-righteous, this martyr who is out here fighting for victims has actually been, she has been, she's victimizing these victims all over again. Do you feel vindicated? I mean, I don't know if vindicated is like the right word because every, it's like all tragic, right? Like Anthony Bourdain is dead and there's thousands of women who are is that my phone? It's your phone. Sorry. Wait, There's it's, it's, <laughs> I'm gonna it stop too. the podcast. I'm gonna stop it. If everybody don't shut their fucking phone, I'm gonna stop it. Okay, There's go. thousands of women who who have actually been raped, yeah. who are actual sexual assault victims, right. who haven't had any justice, mm-hmm. who haven't who haven't had a voice and haven't had an opportunity to um feel any kind of justice towards their abuser that we're looking at Asia as a voice for them. Here's the thing. You can't ever trust a white person who puts their fist in the air on some Word. Yeah, I, I feel the same fucking off way. Jump, off jump, I'm like, who the fuck right? do you think you are? That's what I'm saying. Who the fuck do you think you and are? And she calls it a no shame fist. Like, bitch, we know you have no shame. Like, <laughs> oh, we know. Like, shit. we know. That makes more sense now than ever. This bitch is just as bad as Harvey Weinstein. Bitch. Hold on. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? She's a fucking predator. She's just like him. If she could serially rape people, she would. She's a woman. She can't. She physically can't rape people. So she has to raise them so into she, a rape. So she she emotionally rapes them. She's mentally raping people. She's been mentally raping society. She's been lying to us about everything. She's been manipulating the media. She's been manip- manipulating a whole generation of women into this victim-centric ideology-type feminism that's fucking poisoning people. Yeah. She's poisoned. She is absolute poison. And to me, she's worse than Harvey Weinstein because... Yeah, because at least Weinstein gives you a career. That's what I'm you saying. I mean? He gives <laughs> you something. He gives you something in return. Yeah. She doesn't give you shit. Yeah, she doesn't yeah, give yeah. you anything. She And she's been preying on people who are already victims. What you mean? Oh, people have been raped. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she's supposed to be... Speaking on their behalf. She's supposed to be fighting for them. And yeah. she's been fucking lying. First of all, by her own account, her story of rape, or what happened with Harvey Weinstein, is not what the fuck the definition of rape is. It's not. What happened? She, she let him go down on her. Okay. Then, even though she didn't want to, she said she didn't want to, then she had sex with him right afterwards. Listen, and if you don't want me to go down on you, you just got to say it. You know what I mean? She it's not let like... him. She let him go down 
Connor. I mean, like, and then she had a relationship with him for five years afterwards. Like, okay. stop. Here's Come on. Question. This is the woman that these people, why did Ronan Five Farrell... years of a relationship with her? That's what feels like rape to me. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my question. Um, I've, I was, somebody told me, they're like, hey, if you, if, you know, you go down on a girl. Right, and you're eating her out, and then your nose is so big it could penetrate her. <laughs> is that rape? I, that's what a guy said to me. He's like, your nose is so big it could penetrate her without her if wanting to necessarily be penetrated. Is that rape? That's what he said. Oh so is God. that rape? I mean, but maybe she wants the nose to go inside. That's. But what I'm saying is what if she didn't, but it just so happens my nose is so big and I'm going what down. What about the tongue? Isn't your tongue already in there if you're going down on her? Ew, yucky. Why is that yucky? Well, you put your tongue inside it. Hold on a second. Andrew, <laughs> how have you been going down on girls? I you go don't, down on girls You like, don't put your tongue inside the vagina? No, I, put, kisses. I, go, I go down on girls. I just go down on them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. You're supposed to. You don't put your tongue inside the pussy hole? No, I just go down and then I let them tell me about their day. I thought that's going <laughs> down on a girl. I thought that's what going down is. I go down there, I put my head near your pussy, and then you talk okay. about your day, and you All can't right. see how bored my face is. <laughs> that's not going down on a woman? I, I thought that's how you please a woman. A woman. <laughs> no, that's not how you please a woman. You how can't you? please a woman. Oh, it's that's impossible. right. You can't. That's, so that's just do whatever. Yeah. You eat this bitch out as a rape. Come on. Yo, but that is true. It is penetrating without even trying. I, I have done that once by accident <laughs> with my nose, just eating a girl's butt. Of course. Because I lifted her up, it's and I was starting to leave the, leave the butt, and then I try to take a breath, <laughs> and then no, that's serious. And my nose. Do you, eat, do you eat butt? Do I eat butt? Yeah. Do, who, <laughs> do I what eat you talk butt? Do, who, what? <laughs> who in the what? Well what do you mean? Do you I like eat butt? I get your butt eaten. But I do, do be like getting me? my butt eaten, bro. I do be getting it eaten. Yeah. My man, be yo, eaten. you wanna know what happened one time? Thanksgiving in the Schultz house. <laughs> it always is. We're the natives. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what happened once? And I just went, like the natives, <laughs> you about to get fucked. <laughs> I once had a, uh, I once I once had a girl go down on me, and then I go was just down feeling, on you. <laughs> that sounds weird. suck my dick. How do you want to say it? <laughs> oh, I was I trying know. to be I proper. Think I'm, just thinking of, I'm on right. CBS. No, no, you're I'm right. on CBS. I think okay. My head I have is to speak different. different. So I, I was going to get my my penis sucked. Yes. Right. Thank and then you. she's going down and she's sucking my penis, and then she pulled away for a second, and I took the pull away as you. She was ready to eat butt. <laughs> right so i i did what i a good man is supposed to do in that situation right i lifted because i feel like your upper body strength is not that good so i lifted my leg up right to expose butt Ew. and then she literally looked at me for a second then gently put her hand on my knee and just pushed it back down oh. <laughs> i like her <laughs> Do you, have a, do, you have a, do, you have a, do you have a hairy ass? Of course I got a hairy ass. That's such Why a professional would you way to reject okay a guy. That's like... such a beautiful, just Dude, so yeah. gentle, so yeah. calm. You know? That's cute, but no. Well, yeah, I got a hairy butt. Very hairy. It's How unreal. How's the girl going to eat my butt? Gonna, like... Well, it's not coming out of the butt Because, hole. yeah, you have to like, they spread should, it. Like, spread your butt cheeks. Moses. <laughs> <laughs> what? Moses. Oh, like. Do you know who that is? It's not yeah. the Puerto Rican guy I used to date. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a biblical dude who like yes. he's, you know made the yes, sea the, go. Yes, the, the sea, you know? the sea parted. Yeah, yeah. And to then... reach the promised land. Exactly. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That is the promised land. <laughs> exactly. Damn, bro. <laughs> I gotta stop getting my butt ate. That shit is gross. Who does that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. So back to you and this girl, Asia. Um, this chick Asia. So I she's mean, out here stat raping. She said she didn't fuck him. Now text can't come out that oh says she God. did the, fuck the him. The craziest shit is that like, okay, it comes out that like a month after she starts saying me too and Harvey and this and that and like the New Yorker article, whatever. She, this kid, the guy was like, c comes to her and is like, you know, I'm going to release this photo of me and you, this selfie of me and you that we took, that you wanted me to take after we fucked. Um, unless you pay me, which that's a whole other. No, we'll, we'll get there in a second. Right. But go okay. On. Um. So when this story comes out, she doesn't she doesn't give any kind of statement. The New York Times have been contacting her, trying to contact her, her lawyers, who are total pieces of shit, um, to try to get a statement from her. She didn't say anything. A couple days later, after the New York Times article, she releases her own fucking little screenshot of like. Uh, a typed out statement 
that she obviously and clearly had no one help her write, that blames everything on Anthony Bourdain. She tried to drag him back into this shit Mm. and was like, you know, Anthony really wanted just this to go away and, and insisted that I pay this kid. Now you're now you're talking about him again. You're dr- blaming. You're denying. She also she denied denies that. having sex. She with denied him. having yeah. any kind of sexual relationship with him. Yeah. She did what all abusers and and rapists do to their victims. She tried to discredit him. She tried to say he had financial problems. She tried to say that he had some career issues. You know, making him sound like he had psychological issues. Probably did. Whatever. And then she brings Bourdain into it, right. which was just, I mean, people from what I read that was that, you know, on Twitter and uh, uh, whatever and comments and stuff, people were like disgusted, which finally yeah, people are disgusted. Yeah, it I seems mean, like I they're turning on her. What I thought no, was really are, interesting but... is that uh, Rose McGowan, who was like her <gasps> buddy, buddy, we'll get there. I thought it was very interesting is the whole thing with the Me Too movement from all the leaders and most of the people involved in it and all like this radical feminist community was always believe all victims. Believe all believe, victims. Believe, it's all always, yeah, believe, believe all women. Believe all women. Believe all, all women. women. Okay. Believe all women. Believe all victims, et cetera. Right. And now it comes out that Asi Argento is accused of statutorily raping somebody or sexually assaulting someone. And then all of a sudden Rose is out there tweeting – Hold your judgments. Oh, we I have know. to wait for the facts. Such so hypocrites. when it's your homie, it's believe facts. Such when hypocrites. it's a dude you don't know, it's believe all women. Not even and a dude then, you don't know, a dude you can profit off of. Or, well, right. here's the next step to it, right? The next step was we have to uh, understand that certain people are doing this for monetary gain. Basically saying the kid was just trying to make money right. off a of sexual assault allegation. And it's like... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Are you saying uh, Rose, that did you do people? The same thing? Are you saying that people accuse people of rape to make money? Is that what you're now admitting? Now, when guys have been saying this for the last, I don't know, six months that Me Too has been popping, or a year, when we've been saying, "Yo," sometimes they just say it because they're coming for the bread. All of a sudden, we're misogynists. All of a sudden, we're piece of shit. Okay, All of a sudden, I we're victim too. blaming. I yes, I do that a lot. We're not saying that that people don't get raped we're not saying that that sexual assault doesn't happen we're just saying it is also uh, two things can be true it is also possible that they will use the idea of sexual assault to profit yes rose also tweeted right away i've gotten to know Ostia in the last 10 months 10 months uh you have like pictures of you and her from 2013 or whatever and you're writing like this is my soul sister this that this fucking chick has no I have no respect You're for speaking people. Speaking about who now? Rose McGowan. Okay. I have no respect. If this is your if this is your soul sister, right? Mm-hmm. You don't fucking rush to distance yourself from her. Wait, what did kind she, of when did she distance? Are you? The second Asia came out, the second all this stuff came out about her, yeah. she was like, "I I've only known her 10 months. I just got to know her through the Harvey Weinstein stuff." Like that's not what you were saying a month oh, ago. I, what I read is she said Pathetic. don't reserve judgment. Then she said that after that. Or reserve judgment. Okay. Yeah. But so she dipped out on her. She dipped out. She yeah. totally dipped out. She was like, "Oh shit, because the only the only thing that Rose has going for her yeah. is the fact that she's a victim." So her, that becomes her identity. Her, it is her identity she, and it was she'll, Ossie she'll gravitate towards anything the, that The fuels issue is it. this. These celebrities have a fucking skewed idea of reality. And their reality is so much different than everybody else's. And they are the ones that are speaking for everybody. Here's the thing. I'm always wary of when an actor or anybody in front of the camera in entertainment is an activist. (laughs) Exactly what I was going to say. It's crazy. And the reason I'm wary of it is because I know these people. I am one. They gravitate towards positive reinforcement. They want validation. Oh, interesting. That's mm-hmm. why they're in this business. They're not in this business, right? Like, Rose McGowan didn't get in this business because she really wanted to play a witch. Right. Right? She got into this business because she wanted to be congratulated. Oh, my God, you're so beautiful. You're an amazing Completely. actress. I love you, et cetera, right? Of course. So the thing that we want in this business is validation. That's why I always say I'm a comedian. I'm not trying to change the world. I'm trying to make jokes. Yeah. Okay? What but what happens oftentimes is we gravitate towards what we get response from, and if you see an actor or an actress 
become this big social justice warrior, a lot of times, in my opinion, they just found a source of encouragement and validation and positive reinforcement. Yeah. And they double down on it because that's what they need to feel whole, just like a junkie needs heroin to feel whole. We all oh, yeah. have our we all need our fix. Yeah. Now your view is more nuanced than mine. Mine is a simple, broad view of this is a person who got into this business because they want to be famous. They didn't want it, like you said, they didn't want to change the world. Right. I became an actor because I want to be famous. Right. Not only does reality not matter, I will play an, an entirely different reality to be famous. Right. So I don't trust any activism you have because I don't trust that you're doing it from an activist. Right. Your entire purpose, your whole life has been to be famous. Yeah, mm -hmm. like they'll start out, you know, doing a, um, you know, acting in, in a series. Yep. And when series dries up, they're flipping homes on Home and Garden Network. Oh, yeah. Right? It's like whatever I can do to stay in front of that. Rose Camera. McGowan became a feminist when feminism got popping. Exactly. I know. She's also saying she's not a gender anymore. Because well, that's popping. Because Positive it's poppin'. reinforcement, because it's fame poppin'. in front of the that's camera, it. whatever. South Asian stuff got popping. Now everybody's proud to be. Back when it wasn't like like uh, certain comics or whatever, yeah. people were big not talking yeah. about their identity. Yeah. Nobody talked about it. Then it became hot to talk about your identity. Now everybody's proud to be Indian, proud to be whatever. I was, I've been uh, proud to be Indian when I was broke as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was at a, I was at the comedy cell yesterday, and Aziz was there, right? And Aziz is back working out again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, had a nice little shorty on his arm. Uh, That's what's up. Yep, he deserves yep. it. Consensual, always. <laughs> um, and we were at the table, and we were just talking about the, the crazy uh, rich Asian movie. Yeah. And he was talking about this concept I thought was really funny called uh, woke bait, right? Woke mm. bait, meaning like this is bait for woke people. And he said that there's a uh, a thing in the uh, – he, he said that he'll do something in the audience. He'll be like, have you guys seen the movie Crazy Rich Asian? And, they'll, and he's like – in the audience, there's always like a white lady in the audience who be like, oh, my God, amazing, amazing, right? Yeah. Then, uh, then he goes, oh, yeah, did you like it? And she's like, yeah, I loved it. Like He's like, is it your favorite movie? She's like, yeah, it's like one of my – it's honestly one of my favorite movies. And they're like, well, is it like your favorite? And she'll be like, uh, it's like my favorite rom-com, definitely favorite rom-com. Right? And he goes, okay, it's like the best rom com ever made in history. She'll be like, well, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's the best rom com ever made in history. What about the best movie made in history? Ooh, it's, um, I, I don't, uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, maybe not the best movie made in history. You hate Asians. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? It's like he, he, he can see, and I think this is something that, you know, I see as a white guy, but I'm sure minorities see glaringly, which is this like when white people are Pandering? trying to be woke oh and pander. God, when, so now, pathetic. shout out to a lot of people that I know that are in Crazy Rich Asians. I love the concept of Crazy Rich Asians. In and of itself, Asians did it in such an Asian way. They're like, hey, you know what we're going to do? Here's this book that's popping. We're going to make a movie. No, we're not going to ask people permission to make it. We're just going to make it. Is it going to be hard? Sure. We're going to do it, and it's going to be popping. And then the movie's popping. It's like it's just an example. It's a perfect example of what Asians have done in every country they've been to. Exactly. And it is important for that movie to do well because I've always said, like, don't just – if I want to be an Indian, just make, make an Indian story, whatever, Asian yeah. story. Having said that, we don't need to pretend this is a great movie. I saw it. It's not good. Oh, it isn't. I, I support it with my dollar. Yeah. And if you're a minority, go ahead and support with your dollar, not just for Asian people, for your people. It right. will trickle down. Right. But it's not a good movie. Really? Straight up. I thought the leading dude was good looking as fuck. Yo, son, I'm not going to lie. Every time I see a tall Asian, I'm like, that's a crazy rich Asian. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the point of the movie is that the tall ones are rich. And they got to be, right? right? Yo, I honestly be seeing these tall ass crazy rich Asians, bro. <laughs> I'm like, I'm on to you. You know what I mean? I'm fucking on to you. I uh, know. I just yeah. didn't. The acting the wasn't great. Maybe. The, my, you know what? It, but... My girl read the book, really excited about it, and was like, I just, I'm trying. But Let no. me ask you a question about just because you know how like when you read a book, uh, the movie's always disappointing because you envision all these characters, right? Yeah. You see what they look like. But with this movie, like, they all look the same anyway. <laughs> so is, the, <laughs> is there yeah, anything? Huh? Huh? <laughs> ah, little Asian joke, guys? You get the thing going? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Shout, shouts to my boy Ronnie Chang, uh, comedian, hilarious comedian on the night. He on was the, funny in it. Yo, he's, first of all, that motherfucker is brilliant. No, I believe He that. said he some shit it. about alt comedy. What'd he say? We'll get back to it. This guy's brilliant. Well, he's right. Asian, so he's fucking. He <laughs> is fucking brilliant. This dude. He goes. Uh, he was talking about alt comedy, and you know how like alt comedy for anybody who's listening, there's this type of comedy, alt comedy, and what it's essentially doing is making fun of comedy. Right. Right. And um, 
he goes, that's cool. You can make fun of comedy, but you have to understand without us, you don't have anything. Uh, that's dope. You need that's us dope. to yeah, make yeah. fun of. Yeah. And he goes, he goes, com- traditional comedians like us, we make fun of institutions. Right. Sometimes comedy becomes an institution and you are making fun of that. But don't get it twisted. Your shit can't live without us. Right. You know what I mean? Ain't no sandwich without the bread. Right. <laughs> right? So I thought it was just such a great way of like observing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, anyway, but go on. No, I just, it wasn't. I thought the lead actress was super cute. Right. I didn't think she was a great actress. I'm not the best judge. Maybe I'm a fucking idiot. Right. But I didn't find the story engaging. I didn't find it super funny. There were moments, but like for the most part, I'm watching. My girl passed the fuck out. <laughs> I'm talking about laid down in my lap, put up the armrest, went to fucking sleep on wow, the movie, in the bro. Theater. And That's... she a liberal, like, she's not phony with hers, but she's like, this is a movie you would think appeals to her. Right. But she was like, I can't. I'm not even going to pretend I like this. I'm just going to sleep. Really? Yeah. It was too long. I won't be saying it. Too, it. Long. too long. Really? Yeah. How long? Had to be at least two hours. Oh, if you're a minor, oh you said to too long. I thought you were saying the name of a character. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. Yo, we got a black we dude. Out here, yo, we out here, bro. We got the. Yo, we had to. We been around some brothers, yo. <laughs> I bet she has. Wait, is that a is that a, a black laugh? Black guy. It's a black guy laugh. Right there. That's Akash how I laugh. Black guy's got a great bit about it where he says not every black dude laughs with it, but like this, but one out of five do. Yeah. It's just. <laughs> so crazy because I do so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing it a lot lately. Mm, who you been fucking? Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> who you been doing a very lately? White, a a 50-year-old white... white man. <laughs> Is he 50? 50-year-old white man, yeah. He's not 50 yet. Oh, he's almost 47-year-old white man. But I like this for her. All right, but don't she's say in too love. much because... I'm not going to say anything. All right, I don't want to talk about... You just said she's in love. <laughs> well, besides I the am. love thing. Oh, really? Yeah. She hasn't wow. said it to him yet. Can you say it on the podcast? <laughs> say it. Say it. Say it on the podcast. Say it on, hold on. Say it on the I'm podcast. Not Just say it. Be vulnerable. No, not, Just say, I, I love you, babe. No. Why are what? you making me do that? I love, love my girlfriend. I love you, boo. I'm totally <laughs> gay. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, our gosh. That was gay, bro. Honey, I'm gay. What are you doing what there, you dare? Oh, I'm gay, man. Alex. <laughs> That's Alex, that was so gay. <laughs> That's why I'm over here, man. Bro, <laughs> Alex, you can get fucked straight up. All right? oh, I know. I Stay know. over there. I know. <laughs> Yo, I know. You are a crazy gay Asian, right here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sequel, Crazy Gay Asian. Oh my god. Damn, son. Oh my god. Why are my seats from? You know what? <laughs> you know what? People won't I stop calling me homophobic for saying for that guys on Raya looked gay. Well, is there a gay look? I just meant they were more accessorized than... Yo, let me ask you this question. Can a guy look like a douche? Yeah, of course. A fuckboy, right? Yeah. So if we label the way, the traditional, stereotypical way a guy can dress, why can't we do that with straight... If we do it with straight guys, why can't we do that with gay dudes? That's what I figure. I mean, that's what I think, but... You you can literally find... Matter of fact, you're not saying there's anything wrong with it. If people take offense to that, that means they have a negative view of gays. Yeah. Like, if I say you look... Um, if I say you look uh, like a queen, I don't, queen is a bad one. Uh, give me an example. You, you look, look uh, bougie. Black. Bougie. No, if I say you look bougie. <laughs> I laugh black. <laughs> <laughs> no, now you got your white laugh back. <laughs> right. But what I'm saying is if I say you look bougie and then you someone takes offense on that, they're basically implying that there's something wrong with being bougie. Right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's nothing wrong with saying somebody looks gay. Yeah, There's no, I mean, look, talking it's, into the you know, microphone. No, I, this microphone could not be easier to talk into. It moves wherever you want to put right, it. Okay. You're it's moving once, away from it. Listen, once this, this penthouse stuff came up, right, yeah. people tried to dredge things up about me. Try right? to find negative things about you. Yes, and there were like two articles and The someone, one with Michael Che where you were talking that shit. I called him an asshole. I didn't say anything. not giving you attention. That was right. wrong. You were wrong Hold about on. that one. Yes. Hold on a second. Yeah. <laughs> that has nothing to do with me being a white woman calling a black dude an asshole doesn't make me racist, does it? Of course not. You're allowed to call right. black dudes That's assholes. You've walked okay. down the streets of New York. <laughs> <laughs> so. What laugh was but that? Because, <laughs> I don't know, but now I'm all fucking. Like a French person. <laughs> 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 okay. Now I'm all self-conscious about my laughs. Okay, good. Whatever. Anyway, people, people have been using that to try to discredit anything I say. Okay. I, I think what we basically want you to tell us is who are the other lady rapists out there? Lady rapists? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know who the other lady rapists are. Don't know any. Um, 
No, I don't know off the top of my head, but what I will say is that all of the women that are, that have been, I'll tell you who the the enablers are. Ooh. Okay. There have been women that have been enabling Asia and that are also at the same time claiming Me Too and, and turning Me Too into an issue that only has to do with Harvey Weinstein and that's it. And those women are just as bad as abusers to me because if you have a different idea, if you, if you, well, I'm going to just talk about me since I had a different idea, since I had an idea or an opinion that, that questioned their claims, Mm -hmm. these are the women that tried to fucking bring all this stuff up about me. They tried to silence you, right? Which is exactly what. They're like, you're a misogynist. You're a racist. You, you, you know, tried to ruin Michael Che's life. I didn't try to fucking ruin his life. I just was like, Talking that's on the my exact ass. behavior of what rapists do. Also, to people victims. like yes. people it's don't. Important point. Wait, yeah. say it again. It's the exact same behavior that rapists do to victims. Yes, right? of course. They try to discredit them. They try to silence them. You know, you want to talk about how your boss did something uncomfortable to you. Your boss goes, "Well, if you do that, you're gonna have to leave the company." Blah blah blah. Be quiet. And that's what they're essentially doing with you. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. But no, now the sucks. truth is out. But now the truth is out. Now so the you've truth been is out. And now Asia <laughs> cannot manipulate the public anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think, think that she's out of here? I still want to know. I still there's a lot of unanswered questions about. You Bourdain's. got some Bourdain shit that you're not gonna share with that you're not sharing, but you should share it. You got some good Bourdain. That was my question actually. Is how Leah you're got some public, good Bourdain shit. Right? Yeah. Well, she's. Pre- this is what I was thinking. You're pretty public. You're pretty out there. If I'm Anthony Bourdain's family, especially after she tried to blame her rape on my dead family member, mm-hmm. I'll be like, fuck this bitch. Anything I know about her, I'm going to take to whoever is the foremost person dragging her, and that's you. Yeah, well, I think that I think that you know when they decide to. So you're respecting the family. Listen, when I think I think when they decide to speak publicly, they're going to go to a huge, you know, publication. Publication bigger than Leah McSweeney. But but, (laughs) yeah, yes, bigger than Penthouse. I think you should tell us some shit. I think you got some good Bourdain shit, and I think you should tell us. Um, Drop a little something on us. I think you got. I think you should. It's more about you know Asia. There's a lot of stuff about Asia. Of course. Asia. Yeah. All right, so drop yeah, some something. I mean, look. Drop let's, something let's that's not put, out there. Let's just put it this way. Um, the the three hundred eighty thousand dollars that he lent Bourdain. her or whatever. Yes, that Bourdain. That Bourdain had. paid the seventeen year old for Asia. <laughs> that's just the beginning. That's only the beginning. She's she was tricking on him so hard. She was straight tricking on Define him. Define that. She is a hoe. Define that for people who don't know what tricking on means. She was she was basically fucking getting money from him and fuck by fucking him. She was acting like a hooker. Really? And manipulating him. To give him the money. To give her the money. To give her the money. Yes. Okay. To pay for all her shit. Really? Pay for everything. And her you have this house, on good authority. Her how I this is yes, it's it's totally not arguable, this stuff. Yeah, and from you know, who it came from and everything. And completely. you don't think she ever cared about Bourdain? No. Really, Absolutely she was just not. using him as a bank account. She's a hundred percent was using him as a bank account. Um, she completely emotionally, mentally, fucking hijacked this guy who was already broken, already dealing with depression issues, whatever. And he was, you know what? He's also a really generous kind of dude. He yeah. was like a mensch, right? Like he's wanted to help people. He wasn't uh, was greedy. He wasn't about his money. Yeah. He was just doing what he loved to do, what he was yeah. passionate about, and happened to make money from doing it. Right, right, and right. And this chick, I don't know. Suck to me, dry. she looks like she's a nasty-ass pussy. But whatever she was doing with it, with him, some shit worked. I don't know what was going on mm-hmm. because she had him wrapped around her pinky. Can you tell what a girl's pussy looks like from her face? I can. Really? Yeah. For not just from her face, but from her whole everything. How okay, give me an example. How? Like what what are the telltale signs of pussy? It's not it's not like it's more like an intuition thing. I have good intuition. So you can look like at a girl's tell, like, pussy. Lip size. I can tell her that hers does not smell good. You can tell if a girl's pussy smells? Yeah. What? Yeah. You, can you, you tell start a service? Yeah, can you <laughs> Can yeah, you just take me on your next date, your first date with I someone. I mean, you can make millions. <laughs> can, can you tell what girl's pussy, like the lips look like, the structure? Can you tell? I the... can tell if it's fucking 
Yes. If it's fat, if it's fucking saggy. Are you if kidding? It's... No. I can bring up girls on the Instagram right now. You can tell me if their pussies are fat, let's, small. Let's, for, I'm for gifted. The, for the listeners at home, I'm gifted. let's look up popular Insta hosts, <laughs> and then you look at a few pictures. So that way, because if oh, we just blow pictures on Andrew's phone, they don't know what these bitches look like. They don't know who they are. You know what? I think you're making a great fucking point. Yo Ventura. You know Yo Ventura? Mm-mm. What's the Insta ho you know? I don't, I don't know. You know an Insta bitch. An Insta bitch? <laughs> um, off the top of my head, I don't know their names. I don't really you know follow any. Bitch. I don't. Oh, my bitch is on point. Like, well, it's Betty so White. Fun. What's Betty White pussy look like? What, the old actress? Yeah. I almost felt disrespectful I saying it. Yeah. I Betty White a queen. I felt disrespectful. Yo, but it was, was so funny crazy. to ask. That was too much. It was so shit funny was to ask. a little crazy, bro. Betty White's pussy look like an elephant ear. But yeah. let me get back. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are unanswered. Hold on. There's a lot of things that are unanswered about Yeah, Bourdain, what's right? women's pussies look I like? Wanna <laughs> no, I want to know. I want to know what was. I want to know what was going on the last week between him and her. There's a lot of stuff. There's just a lot of stuff. Are you that, gonna drop dime on it? You gonna give a little something? There's, or well, there's things I really don't. I don't know. And and you know. So. I get you gotta respect Bourdain's family, but uh, have they said to you don't say this to anybody? No, I, I don't. I haven't. That's not. Yeah. You haven't spoken with them at all. No. I had to reach out if I was Bourdain's family. This bitch out here saying my motherfucking husband is the reason you're a rapist, bitch. You crazy. Well, she, not, she wasn't saying that that's why she's a rapist. Whatever. You rape was... somebody. Don't bring up my husband. My, my exactly. Well, right. Has I'm your pussy husband, changed son, since you whatever. had a child? <laughs> um, so it, I think that. It's more caring now. It, it it's better. It's warmer. It's like it's, it's just. It's more it's, inviting. It's no. milf pussy. No, it's no, no, just... no, no, no. I'm not asking you that. Does it I'm look asking different? you if no. there's been some sort of a renovation. No, you just looked at me so weird, though. You just looked at my crotch. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah, did. you were like you renovation, you sure and then did. you were all just you, like, "Yo, straight up, you did for sure." I peeped. Damn, I wish I got. Is that right? Closer. Sure. I feel really uncomfortable <laughs> right now. Shot. Is that okay. wrong to do? Oh, no. Boy. I wonder if that's wrong to look at somebody. Is I look at bulges all the time. Yeah, I know Wait, that Andrew, pull up, a, pull up an Insta bitch real quick, I don't quick, follow please. any women on Instagram. That's, that's <laughs> Alex, very, you follow some hoes on Instagram? Except me. Gay. That's the biggest lie. That's, dude, that's gay. Hold that's on. why here, you should do here it. Here we go. I got, I got one for you. Wheezy. <laughs> all right. Why? All right. What about, does, what is it, Wheezy? It tastes good. Wow. Shouts to you, Wheezy. Oh, yeah. From Horrible Decisions. Now, what do the lips look like? I can tell you. Firm? <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke, Weezy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you really trying to get yourself That was a joke. Up, I know. That was Take I his can, mic, yo. Take his a, mic. She's got a good, tight, juicy pussy, and she gets really wet. You can tell that just from this one picture Dude, of her that's dog. That's crazy. Yeah. That's Let me know crazy. if I'm right. Yo, Weezy. DM me. <laughs> <laughs> We, yo, this is crazy, dude. You know, they so recently the horrible decisions girls who their fucking Instagram is so great that mm-hmm. it's fucking amazing. What? Um, I'm, I'm, what's Wheezy's? I'm trying to call Wheezy. Can you call Wheezy and then give me the phone? We're not doing that. Call again. me the give me the fucking phone, dude. They recently put up. Yeah, yo, listeners, if you're upset or not, follow okay. their Insta. I will leave comments sometimes on their Instagram, and the people who follow their Instagram hate me so much. Like they're always yo, picking on me. Like no matter what I say, speaking. aren't you the white. girl that da 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 da? Like yeah. Probably, yo, but. listeners at home, if you're mad when I'm talking about sports, it's because Cass is late. Yo, that's right. Cass supposed to be here at seven. Yo, son, it's Schultz. You're Yo, live on the podcast. You're live on the podcast right now. Okay. Okay. We got a we got we got a pussy whisperer on the podcast. Okay. Literally a pussy whisper. What, like? what does she look like? It's a girl. Okay. okay. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. It's it's it's. <laughs> listen, listen. Nobody give a fuck. We All need right? to know. Listen. What we what what we did is we asked the pussy whisperer. She said she can tell what a girl's pussy looks like. How it smells and how juicy it is, <laughs> just from looking at a girl. I showed her one picture of you, one picture of you, okay? Okay. She, and what she says? She sounds nervous. She said that your pussy looks like when a hippopotamus. <laughs> Stop. No, I'm just joking. Stop. She said your shit looked tight, juicy, and smells good. Well, what did I exactly I say though? My pH That's like the one. I'm so yeah. I can tell that your pH. Yeah, I she said. She said, "I can tell that your pH is good just from looking at a picture." I showed her the picture of you on Instagram where the bottom of your titties are, are showing. Lips firm. 
<laughs> what do you tell us? Well, no, you know I, the one I, I'm talking about? I think that she gets... Hold on. So, um, okay, so <laughs> the next question is, are your lips firm? <laughs> what do you think? Because I think yes. I can tell you what my bowl looks like. I just took a picture of it right before I went to sleep. Um, <laughs> Hold on, what's a Volvo? No that's the so Swedish car, dog. Yeah. That's yeah. With the lips. That's Wait, Volva is a lips? You got two Volvas or one? I'm just, just like, uh, look. I'll put those I'll on. I'll my vagina for you. It's, like I told you earlier, it's a little tucked in-ish. It's like I'm a medium-sized clip, but you can't really see it unless I spread my lips. It's not that big. And yes, they are thin. And, um, yeah. Who is this girl? Do you know Leah McSweeney? <laughs> Yo, like, has someone sent you a picture of my pussy lips? Because <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Alex. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay, Weez, bye, baby. Good, she has a good sense of humor. She's awesome. Bye. Hello? Yeah, bye. Bye. Okay. She's great. Yo, shout out to them. They're coming on. They're they're actually gonna have a therapy episode, I think, right? That's today. Right after. Right after this. Right after we. Will I get to meet them? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, yeah. awesome. Exactly. You could so check recently out the they put on a rape. They put a rape culture pyramid on the Instagram, and I wrote "rape culture is a myth," and yeah. then people just went. Nuts. They went crazy. They went crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah They went yeah, crazy, yeah. but Believe that's no because victims. people don't understand what. Believe no victims. We don't. Well, we don't. But we don't <laughs> live in a rape culture. That's the culture. rapist pyramid. We don't, live, <laughs> we don't live in a rape culture. That's just another myth that has been pushed by the new wave of feminism to make women into victims and make all men predators. What do you mean by that? We don't live in a rape culture. I don't know what rape culture is. I also didn't know pussy's pH was very important. So oh, I'm about to, is it I'm like about water where you want it to be mad alkaline? I'm about hold to on, make vagina on, pills. When you said pH, <laughs> I thought you would like, like when you were like, like are the lips fat? I thought it was no. like pH AC. <laughs> like, wait, wait, hold on. What do you that mean with pH? A pH. Yeah. Well, yeah. pH balance. Yeah. You want it to be it's alkaline important. like water is healthier yeah, that way? Yeah, exactly. Like that's what makes it, if your pH balance is off, it can smell like you get BV and your shit like smells bad. What's BV? BV? Bacterial vaginosis. Whoa. Yes. Bacterial vaginosis. Vaginosis. Yeah. Vaginosis. Bacterial vaginosis, bro. When the sea parts. Wait a minute, for real, BV is a big thing? It's a thing that women deal with. I have, yeah. You've had some beaver? I've had it in the past, for sure. And? I got rid of it, thank God. But what, bad so dick what gave you, it to you? What do you do for it? Well, there's medication, of course, but I think it has a lot to do with, like, diet. It has a lot to do with... That water that Andrew be drinking can do with the weather, things like that. The weather, and then also if you your chemistry isn't mixing yeah. right with the dude. Yo, I heard this. A girl told me this nasty. shit. She said that if a girl has is has bad chemistry with the dude, if a girl should not be with a dude, sometimes not only will she not get pregnant by him, her pussy will stink. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, when me and my ex of six years, bro- seven years, broke up, mm-hmm. the first guy that I started having sex with, which was the first person besides this dude that I'd had sex with in six years, right. my vagina was on fire. Really? Fire. And there was, I didn't have any kind of STD or anything. It was just the chemistry. It was just that new dick sh- energy. The new, new dick <laughs> New energy. dick chemistry and energy and whatever it was. It just was off. Like, I was like, yeah, I can't fuck you anymore. Let me ask you this question. Do you believe in this big dick energy yes. concept? Really? Oh, big time. Has there ever been a person with big dick energy and that little not, dick dick? Yes, of course. And how does that feel? Disappointing. Do you feel... I feel like I've been lied to. Do you feel assaulted? It takes a lot to make me feel assaulted. <laughs> that's, so can I say this? That's good to know. <laughs> so the feeling you feel when someone has big dick energy and not a big dick, that's how men feel when women take their makeup off. Whoa. Mm. Wow. Whoa. It's a criminal offense. Wow. Or the Instagram catfish. That's why I asked. Yeah, I don't really, like, uh, yeah. I mean, the makeup is, can trick people. The so, makeup yeah. can trick, but you're not a big makeup person. I'm not you a don't big wear makeup a lot person, of makeup. no. And especially on a first date or especially, like, just on a date in general, I'm just not going to wear a lot. Only if I'm being filmed for something or something like that. Do you believe I in... want someone to know what the fuck I look like. Yes, no shit. Right? Do you believe in plastic surgery? What do you mean, believe in it? I don't think, I don't, like, disavow it. 
Yeah, sure. Would you, you ever get plastic surgery? I don't know. What would you potentially get? Um, nothing yet. Maybe when my boobs start to not really look good, mm -hmm. you know, then I would be down for a boob job, maybe. But it, it does scare me, the thought of getting put under and just for vanity's sake, mm. you know? Mm. Um, I also have this Catholic guilt shit, like, be happy with what you have, you know? Like, so, and I'm pretty, I'm okay with myself. You know how when you buy a home, mm -hmm. it's a major investment? Yeah. So they look into your back history to see how, not only how you're doing with money now, but how you have done a bank, how yeah. you have done with money. Of course. Right? They look everything into your past because they want to see what your future is going to be like. Right? Why is it when we decide to have children with somebody, we don't look to see who they are before plastic surgery? <laughs> Why don't we look into who they are before everything? So that we could see what, what the, the kid's going to look, look like. Do you That's think that there idea. should be like some sort of yeah. mandatory? Well, I mean, aren't you going to look at like old photos of your lover? Yo, or but your sometimes like or girls know that girls have plastic surgery or like they have fake hair. Like I just found out that like a lot of black chicks got fake hair. Like, How you just find I that know, out? Right? Yeah. You've been on you Twitter in the in last eight And I only York. dated black women for a long time. But they, I don't know. So you never touch their head? I know better than that. <laughs> <laughs> you out here touching black girls' hair. We crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you do date these white bitches. You out here touching black girls' hair. <laughs> Fuck out of here, bro. But uh, but for real, I noticed that. You know, so maybe maybe we just don't pick up on these things like you do. You could probably look at a girl immediately. Oh, I can tell what she's had done. In a second. She could right tell away. a lot about a woman just by looking. Yes, you can. Yeah. You a bitch whisperer. You are a girl whisperer. I mean, I didn't know Aussie <laughs> was a total piece of shit. And everyone thought she was amazing. Really? Which to me seems like common sense, but I just... I, oh, shit. Why well, I fell? I think maybe I've dealt with a lot of <laughs> shitty people, so I can spot them like pretty easy. Actors are usually garbage. She's... I don't even Facts. really call her an actor, but yeah. She's now, aspiring worst, actors aspiring. are worse than successful that is the actors. Worst, right, because she hasn't even made it at all. Absolutely. And they'll do anything to get on at that point. At this point, what how she, old is like, she? She like made out First of all, there's like photos of her like there's she was like making out with a dog in a fucking movie. And there's also pictures of her like 8 months pregnant, naked, smoking cigarettes. Like she's like and I love vulgarity. I'm all for it. No, that's but garbage. that's just disgusting. Pregnant smoking is garbage. She's yeah, she is fucking nasty. Garbage, yeah. Yeah. She's nasty and like honestly, like shame on everyone that like allowed her to like climb up to the top of this fucking and fuck all the f Oh my god, I get so crazy. I know you fuck get really every, worked up. Fuck everyone Good. Yeah. that has just let her like come in and like tr and just hijack this shit this you know? idea that you can't victim blame you can't shame it just you can really you empower victimhood and that's how you ascend socially these even days. these listen even these these people who are writing op-eds good now, point yeah these, these women who are writing op-eds are like i don't know like i feel kind of bad like being mad at her like she's a victim of harvey weinstein a victim she got to use his private jet for five years he paid for her fucking nanny if, and if we want to do that if you go back to a lot of rapists and child molesters, whatever sexual history like to their childhood they probably had some horrendous shit happen to them it does right. not excuse what they became oh, what if harvey Wein let's okay I think harvey a weinstein good example of that is um uh, jeffrey dahmer i don't know jeffrey dahmer or charles manson right it's like well, listen what about charles, charles manson manson's mom sold him not only so, he got raped repeatedly. He was like molested. Right. Boys. A lot of fucked up shit happened to him as a kid. It humanizes him. Doesn't. But it doesn't exonerate him. Exonerate him from. And the also, these shit women are now like, you know what? Like Alyssa Milano says, victims can then turn around and victimize others. Okay, Alyssa Milano. Um, what if Harvey Weinstein was molested as a kid? Are you going to say the same thing about no. him? I don't think so. That's a good point. I mean, now if we start using that logic, we're just going to let everybody fucking do everything. Oh, well, they, they something bad happened to them, and so that's why you it's are, okay. And that's why we were victimhood gets rewarded because we've completely force-fielded it with anything I can do. Well, understand what he – he was so public with his victimhood. We, we have that first and foremost in our mind. And then if you say some shit, and this is why I think you were so brave for always speaking out against uh, whatever her name is, Argento mm – -hmm. Uh, then you are victim blaming. Oh yeah. You're not allowed to vi victim blame. Automatically makes you nuclear. There's a social cost. Right. There's a social cost to doing what you did, and most people aren't willing to pay it. There's a social cost to honesty. I can't even. There's sleep a social at night. cost to honesty, and most people aren't willing to pay it. And you know what I've realized is uh, a lot of this is driven by the stock market. 
and it didn't I didn't didn't hit me until I was having a conversation with the guys and I'll bring one of them in it right now in a second my boy Abdi is here but um companies since they're public are concerned about share price because now once you're a public company you have a responsibility to the people who own pieces of that company right, right. you know what affects share price not the actual numbers perception so mm. if a story gets leaked that Boeing jets actually don't fly that well. Guess whose stock price dips? Boeing jets. Now, it could be a completely fake story. It could have nothing to back it up, no information. It could be an accusation, but that accusation affects the stock price. That's why companies cut ties with people who have accusations because they're worried about the stock price. Disney fires James Gunn. The director right. yeah. of uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. right? Because of the pedophile jokes and all this kind of shit like that. Now, it is Disney. I, I totally understand there's things going on yeah. here. But but they don't fire him because they're taking a moral high ground. Oh, no, of course They not. fire him because they have stock options. They have stock uh, owners, whatever it is, yeah. shareholders, shareholders to answer to. And if that Disney price dips 5%, motherfuckers are heated. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's all about monetary stuff. Yeah, right, of course. But no now, one really gives a but shit. But now we're living in an age. Think about this. We're living in an age where Twitter, yes, people who can't yeah. even own stock, yes, the poorest of the poor who are on Twitter because yes. that's all they have. That's, they have no jobs. They're no just on jobs, Twitter all nothing. Day, all night. Literally, yep. Nicki Minaj fans, Barb's, totally right, are out here affecting the stock market. <laughs> yeah. We had these Barb's. Back in the day, when I uh, said that Nikki was kind of in a word that rhymes mm. with what? In a word, stock. runt. Runty. Yeah. I didn't say runty. Oh, you said she's runty. I said she, where the rhymes right. with runty, right? She can. I isn't said, that part I didn't of her say MO? she is. I thought she. she there's that's like in her songs thing, she refers though. to herself. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They started tweeting at our advertisers, <gasps> and we had and we never spoke about this. We had oh, advertisers shit. leave the show. Brilliant, with no. brilliant idiots lost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars because they did it because they're just tweeting at them. And you know why they you know why they left the show because they were worried about perception. They went into my old tweets. They brought up all my old tweets, etc. Worried about perception. So, every, so right now, people are so obsessed with perception because the stock price is tied into it. Yeah. You remove private companies, don't give a fuck. Private companies do whatever the fuck they want to do. They don't yeah. care about perception as long as the numbers are good. I agree with the idea. I am unsure if it's if I would like examples. I'm not to be a Disney. dick, but private com no private companies. They don't give a fuck. Because uh, yeah, my my true. perception is companies constantly are like, yo, we can't have this. Let's let's back sure. the fuck out of this guy. Yeah. Sure, the sure. one example I can think of, to your point, Netflix isn't public. No, Netflix is publicly traded. Oh, they sit yeah. behind Aziz. What sure. about Uber? Uber's publicly traded. I think. Oh, no. No, no, I no, I don't know. I don't know. Netflix sees that Aziz, the Aziz story was. One of the he was a casualty of the Me Too movement. He you was know. T, he's the tipping point. He, I mean, it he was really was really, really kind of. That was the first the, That's the story most woke that thing came he out. ever did. Well, listen, but listen, you know, there was a there was a whole group of women. There was it was split into two. It was like half the women were like, "This is wrong. It's right. Yes, he should be held accountable because he was this Just and that." Split by age. It's insane. Age, it was totally. Age the it was year old women were like, "This is totally fine." Twenty year old women were like, "Oh my god, this is." I mean, I, these culture, women, blah, blah, blah. these twenty year old women that yeah. have no idea how to deal with real life. I'm worried for them. Yeah. I am so worried for them because they are so clueless on how sex works. Yeah. And they are so clueless about the reality of sexuality. Right. Right, right, right. That they're not prepared. There's a lot of gray area in sex, and people don't want to admit that. I think yeah. that's the problem, is that we're trying to turn sex into a math equation. Oh, it's my just God, frankly it's so not. crazy. The whole term seduction is playing with the gray area. If, it, if sex was a black and white thing, seduction wouldn't exist. Yeah. I want to have sex with you, I don't. It's done. Yeah. Fine, if you want to say that's playing with the gray areas, right? But then throw out the whole term seduction, or call seduction rape, straight up. I want to bring a friend of mine in. Abdi, why don't you come in here? Mind. Um... I've known for a little bit of a while, a uh, little bit of a while. I can't even speak right now. If you guys can hear a faint beat in the background, there's some people next door that are making music, and uh, I've asked them to turn down the volume <laughs> once, and they obliged, and then they turned it back up and bravely locked the door so I can't open their door to get in to tell them to turn it back down again. But anyway, here we are. So I got my boy in. We were talking about victims. Abdi, yep. you have every reason to consider yourself a victim. No, yeah, I mean... Uh... Every well, reason. Definitely, definitely. Backstory. Somalian. That's what I was going to guess. Somaliland. Yeah, so, Somali. Somali. From Somalia. 
Somaliland probably is like you know back in the in the uh, colonial books, but yeah, Somali and uh, refugee. Know, refugee. Uh, I mean, obviously, if people know the story, Black Hawk Down, a lot of the different things there. That was uh, Somalia. That was Somalia. It's Black Hawk Down. Yeah. Y'all took down a Black Hawk. Yeah, dude. That was like two weeks before I was born. Like we took down a Black Hawk. I think and then like we let you into Minnesota. Yeah, you know, still Minnesota got mad refugees. What is refu- yeah, mad. refugee meaning? You escape? Like what? What happened? Yeah, How so does that... yeah, the situation. So the the story in uh, or the situation in Somalia in that time, there was a uh, issue between two clans, right? It's kind of very similar to, in a way, very very different, but very similar to the situation in like Rwanda, where there was the uh, Tutsis you know, and the, the Hutus. Yeah, the Hutus. Yeah, the Tutsis. One that was in power, the Tutsis, I believe, mm-hmm. and then the Hutus. Then once they kind of you know gained arm and power pretty much like exerted all their angst and anger at the you know other tribe the english system um, is kind of brilliant yeah. what they would do is they'd put a minority group in power mm-hmm. so that they would remain loyal to the english yep. right so if 10 percent of the, com- uh, the country was hutu or tutsi i forget mm-hmm. which one it was mm-hmm. yep. the english would go all right y'all are in power yep. and then the majority would be like yo what the fuck and then mm-hmm. the minority would say okay well we're going to be loyal to you english whatever you say because if we're not then we're dead Yep. And basically, I think what England backed out, and they just went ham. Yeah, and the Belgian, and and, and, and for Rwanda, but yeah. So in Somalia, it's like it was the Hawia, um, who you know were the ones kind of like ethnically cleansing, uh, the like the Daro like tribe, and then there's like also sub tribes within that. There was and like so, a, a what's it called a Holocaust going on? It was pretty much what they called. There was a, a professor who came to uh, my school, and she had a book called Clan Cleansing. She like came up with that term. She coined it. Just to say, like, this was all out an extermination of the other clan, right? So it's not really like a genocide because it was such a – on a smaller scale, but it yeah. was much more – proportionally, it was, like, higher, right? Like, the the, the killing and the, and the, the cleansing. The percentage of your clan that died there, was there were, higher than the percentage of Jews that died in the Holocaust, you're saying? No, no, I will I, – I wouldn't put it in, in those terms, but the idea of it was, like, you're trying to, like, wipe out a specific clan, right? Yeah. Like, a specific group of people. If, if if we were trying to get away, you know, get rid of all the Ojibwe, right, rather than, like, Native Americans, that's different. Uh, like, there'd be a, you know, okay. like, yeah. like, that'd be a more the of, like, Iroquois a The Iroquois going yeah. up against the, you know, Cherokee or some shit. Yep. Okay, yep. gotcha, yep. gotcha. So, yeah, so uh, basically at that situation, uh, folks in my larger tribe uh, were – given asylum all, all around the world and we basically came here i was like 45 days old like you know two months or so wow. and uh yeah i mean you know i hear a lot of stories from my mom you know especially you know with my political activism you know and like doing you know some of the stuff that i do she's just like you know just be happy that you're alive you know like just ch- chill back you know and and the, the situation that they went through uh but yeah to answer your question so you could I be a victim have, i could be you a victim could completely yeah. oh. Sure. Line yourselves up to the, and you have every reason to say so. You have a lot of can into this blame a lot of people situation, yeah. right? You know, then you come to America. Not only are you a black dude, also a Muslim dude, right? Yep, Double yep. whammy. Yep. Living in Minnesota. My man oh, looked like he could build a clock. Yeah. <laughs> what? They no, build clocks from over Texas. There? Yeah. Clock boy. Clock boy. Oh, hey, man. Shit. Yo, clock boy. Yo, shout out to clock boy. Cause Struggle he's fucking, pimp, dog. Yeah, yeah, big yeah. time. I called that out dumb Yo, early. You and did. You did. You did. You shit about Bro, it. Bro, they said the clock that he put together was just like, he pretty much like... Like open, we use a screwdriver, rem- open up another one, and yeah, it was, I rem- was no engineer. Yeah, he was, he, no yeah. He's a dummy. Yeah. I remember arguing with Andrew when he was like, "Yo, that's uh, this kid, blah blah blah." I was like, Obama "Fam, it's a him. fucking child." Blah blah. And we're kid, going, yeah. I'm getting heated yeah. back and forth. Nah. Then Andrew tell, sends me a picture yeah. of the clock, and he goes, "Tell me this don't look like a bomb." And I was like, <laughs> "Hey, you got that?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and, and it was crazy. He's like, I think, and I'm not trying to like knock this Muslim family or anything like that. No, I'm not that father. That father was about the fucking spotlight. It was the money and like suing and like you know people try to you know. Get their, He's the Asia finesse. Argento of clocks. Yeah. Of I clock have no idea. You guys are <laughs> of clocks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Straight up. There was um, a kid who went to school with a uh, just for anybody listening, and yeah. also Leah, because uh, you only read about uh, sexual assault stories. Apparently, right. this kid went to school and he basically had what looked like a bomb. Mm-hmm. But right? it was like a science experiment or like a project. Oh. But nobody gave him. And he was Muslim. Nobody he was gave Muslim, him yeah. a science experiment to do. Mm-hmm. He just decided to come to school. It he wasn't showed like it, it was a science. He fair, showed no. it to one no. teacher, <laughs> and that teacher said, "Hey, what is that? Do me a favor. 
close that because other people might think something about it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, nah, everybody going to see this. Mm-hmm. And eventually, by the third fucking teacher or something, one of the teachers was like, yo, I think there might be a bomb here. Get this shit out of here. So he was, he had every option to close the goddamn suitcase. Not even, not even just like that. Not even just that. They were being what careful, right? I mean, uh, to a degree. Clockwork. Ahmed, Ahmed was his name, like uh, Ahmed. So the, the other issue was that he, you know, he was sent to the principal's office and they tried to ask him, like, what's, what How is old going was he? on? This kid's like 12, maybe 13, okay. very young. Uh, so they asked him the principal's office. They go, "Oh, what's going on? What is but this? What, what are you doing? Old enough? Yeah. Old enough for Asi to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not to fuck to groom. To groom? You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yes, yeah, she yeah. will wait till he's she, seventeen. Yeah, yeah, it's like fine wine for her, but a little early. It's like chickens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just what? let it let it grow up. It's until, veal. Yeah. It's veal. Oh, it's baby God. chicken. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So so basically, I mean, what happened was Obama invited that kid to the White House, and it was kind of like fuck you, Texas schools. You guys are all racists and. Uh, the kid left the U.S. and he went to like the Gulf states or whatever to pretty much you know go to school out there. But then I think the the family eventually came back. But when you look into the history of the family, the older sister had like done a bomb threat. You know what I mean? This and is like ridiculous! Yeah, so I've I, never yeah. heard of it. Obama invited him to Ob- the White Obama House. Story. Where the fuck yeah. no were you? No wonder why so many ago. people hated yeah. Obama. This yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. This, I'm uh, I'm shocked you don't know this. Yeah. Like uh, this is a massive this is, story. Yeah. This is. You know, what year was it? Because it was a year where I was three, four years ago. You were just studying pussies. I was like highly over medicated and in a bad relationship. Who cares? I don't want to spend too much time on that. Yeah, but this is. Go on. So so yeah, basically, I mean. Yeah, so Clockboy, shout out to Clockboy, because he right. probably is chilling right now yeah. for that money that he got. Oh, yeah, he got some on. bread. Okay, yep. so then you're anyway. you're in this situation where you could absolutely play up the for victim sure. card. I'm sure tons of people would Oh, know, my God, they'd be you. like, yeah, they'd be fawning all over. Yo, I throw out that yeah. refugee thing, like, pff, kidding me? The shorties? Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh. They They're that? like, oh, my God, let me suck your dick. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Yeah. You are the captain <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> yo, funny, yo, funny, hold on, hold on, funny story. What is the story about that movie? I auditioned for that movie. Like, really? Kevin Phillips, and to I got a call back. You had too many teeth? Uh, starving guy number four. And I had too many teeth. Didn't look too scary, I guess. Nah, you he got great. fat, you got good son. skin. This uh, yeah, dude got, got fat got in America. How long have no, you known him? How long have I known you? Like a, over, I think close to He year. came to close my to show year. in Minnesota. Yep. This is the thing, Andrew's That's incredible. That's how you guys met? Yep. fucking fans. Yo, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yep. I got a group chat going. He's part of my Muzzy group chat. Right? Yeah, right. I got crazy. Damn, you know most of the when you call them Muzzies. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's crazy. Crazy. I don't like it, dog. Yeah, I don't like you knowing shit like that. That shit makes me real tight. So I got him and my boy F.A., who I still call F.E., but uh, these are my consigliere. Why bro. does Minnesota? When it's wartime, ha- I go to them. Why Minnesota has so many refugees? So, because so, Sudanese refugees are there too yeah, in mass, yeah, yeah. right? Oh yeah, it's because so, that's where the the, the, the burqa makes sense. Like uh, you <laughs> want to be covered head to toe <laughs> when it's negative twenty. That's you know funny. what I mean? There's it's actually the not there's, there's not that sense. many people wearing burqas. I think that's a, like fucked Americanism, where it's like, listen, we'll let you Probably in, but you got to go to Minnesota. No, the 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 reason why is no, it's genius. It's oh, like, how do we get really them to convert it. to America? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go to middle you know, we can't America. put you to New York. You're going to just hide in yeah, Brooklyn yeah. with everybody else just like you. <laughs> now, we're going to send you to Minnesota. Yo, yo, my Uber driver was white. like Palestinian. You know what I mean? We were just like chilling. But, but no, the reason why Minnesota is because of the Lutherans out there. They're like so giving and like they set up mm. these kind of sponsorship oh, programs where they you know bring in refugees. So they brought the Hmong, the Cambodians, the, the just, you know some Vietnamese, and a lot of Somalis. So the, the majority of Somalis <laughs> outside of Somalia are in Minneapolis, Minnesota. What's their relationship with the Lutherans then? Is there an appreciation? Is there a fondness? I mean, you know, we, you know, they stay over there. You know, they, you know, it's like we pretty can't much zap them up. Like, no, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, what, it's, you guys y'all can have a like... real Thanksgiving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we really, no. I mean, I think what it was is like, you know, the small towns in Minnesota is where a lot of these churches are based. They help get you set up, and then afterwards, people just kind of coalesce into their communities where they yeah, have like flea markets, go where it's and familiar places where it's familiar and where you know people. So people right. are like connecting with people from back home. Like decades later, so, uh, so yeah, I grew up in uh, Minnesota. Um, came here in again like '93, to like two months after I was born, and yeah. Why are you not been, a victim, bro? So I mean, just to kind of just take to put things context back, into all kinda, this yeah. real quick. No, no, I feel you. I feel just you. put context into all that. Not only is he not a victim, he's a black Muslim Trump you're gonna, supporter. You're this jump guy right into loves it. Trump. Huge. Yeah. This is my. You, this is my cabinet. My cabinet is with one Turkish. Muslim dude who's like the Pretty most liberal, liberal fucking Pretty pussy, liberal. right? But he's actually <laughs> no, he's a good guy. He's actually genius. Yeah. But he's he's like 
He's one of these liberals that actually can make the arguments for it. He's not like a Twitter liberal. He's not Ashley Argento. Right. He's, he's, not, he's not that. He's not he only a, like typing away and that's all no, he's, he's doing. No, like, he's supposed to be a lawyer. Yeah, right? yep, yep, he is yep, a lawyer, yep, right? Yep, and it's like yep. this guy knows exactly what he's talking about. He just believes that's the right way. Yep. And then we got Abdi over here who's Trump. Like He literally said the other day, I'm not going to – he goes, he goes, Trump's my OG, bro. No, Trump's <laughs> a big homie. I'm going to say it right now. Trump's that nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Trump's that nigga, cuz. No, real talk. Real talk. No, hold on. Hold on. Let's, let's back up a bit. Let's go, back up go, a bit. Go, go, go. No, actually, I'll just tell you in the We're group chat. Up, no, no, let's check. go. No, let's I, go, Abdi. Tell them. Right, hey, I'll tell I'll tell him. But no, I was yeah, going to say yeah. in that group chat, basically the whole premise of the group chat is to bring you to Islam, Joe. You know yeah, I mean? know. They've been trying the to convert me for a like, minute. Yo, man, yo, just that pork shit. That's what they you know, do, dog. It's inherent. The first day, the first day, the first day he meets me, right? impregnate you soon. What happens? Make the baby. First day, first day after the show, I go, yo, I'm hungry after the show. Y'all want to come out? Bro, this motherfucker gave me pork. This man gave you me pork. You already got a white Andrew. woman. Stop it, dog. No, no, Stop no, no, it. No, 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 I'm telling That's you. That's your pork is... right no, there. That... <laughs> yo, let's chill. Haram. Yeah. yeah. Haram. Yo, none of that happened. All right. No, but none of that happens. All right, all right mom, if you're listening. Yo, yo, this is what happened. All right, we go yeah. to this restaurant. Yeah. I get it. Like, I'm like, all right, let me get this chicken burger. You know, he's nice, gracious enough to, like, you know, pay for me and, and uh, my homegirl. Come on. And, now. like... I bite well, into the sandwich. You let your date get paid for no, by no, no, another no. man? No, 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 no. Ah, the fuck? A, no, no, no. It was, it, was, it was not a date. It was not a date. I, like, I knew Shorty like, since, like, you know, growing up. So it's like friends. But Groomed her. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. No, oh no Asya. Don't give me any of that oh Asya. Don't give me any of that Asya. I want to hear about <laughs> your thoughts on all that, too. No, for real. No, I, yo, because I know yeah, you were yeah, you, I could feel your energy Shut up. There. Yeah. yeah. No, no. We'll, no, we'll, you know what? Last time I was on, you guys wouldn't let me say one fucking thing. No, I see why it was so good. you know what? I was like, I'm coming on and I'm gonna fucking no, talk. Real talk. I see you got a mission. No, Everybody, actually, real quick, yeah. real quick, time's up. No. So, <laughs> so, 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 so back to this, real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. Go speed go up his story go so go we go can go get go to the sexy Trump shit. We go out to eat. He orders a chicken burger, right? Bite right into it. Guy bites right into the burger, right? And then he goes, "Mmm, this is good." I did goes, not say that. Yeah, you did. You're like, this is a new that. taste no, to like, my yo, palate. I don't like, know. What is this yeah. flavor that tastes so great and Fuck just makes me feel? No, yo, no, you did say that. <laughs> you said some <laughs> shit. You said, <laughs> you said some shit. You were like, mm, holy shit, this is one of the best chicken burgers I've ever had no, in my entire what life. What I said verbatim was, yo, this fucking tastes different. No, what you There's said verbatim is, I was like, fam, yo, there might be pork in there. Nah, this and, dude said, just, just don't worry about it. You're tripping. I didn't I saw, say you're yeah. tripping. And then he, pull, he literally pulls out the fucking pork. Oh, yeah. Right? It was like bacon right under the chicken. They, the waitress they, comes that's over. That's a hate crime. <laughs> Yo, cock boy. Call cock boy's lawyer. <laughs> so straight up. The waitress comes over. He goes, miss, is there pork on this? Is this pork? He's holding a piece of pork. Yeah. But he's like, is there pork on this? She's like, oh, yeah, there's pork. And he looks her right in the eyes. that restaurant. He yeah, goes, Allah. <laughs> 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 no, none of that. But no, for a white like, we should have never brought them here. <laughs> what was wrong with us? He just took a lighter to his chest. <laughs> Yo, okay, straight, so straight Trump. Buddhist. We're not gonna get into the Trump shit right away. But yes, we gonna get into it right no, away. This flavor too. You said right. Trump that N word. You Yo, got Trump's into it pretty nigga, quickly. Though. I mean, I'll say that every goddamn day. How but the at the end of the day, yeah. What I'll say is like, you know, in 2012, I voted for Obama. You know what I mean? Coming up. You know, pretty liberal, pretty progressive, uh, but not really knowing the kind of mechanics of, of, of politics or like, you know, policy. But after a while, you're kind of I go I go from, again, liberal 2012, voting for Obama, kind of libertarian going through college. And what it was was really through going through college, seeing all these fucking fake ass liberals, oh, these the fucking worst. surface mm-hmm. level, simplified fucking Robots. Activists, yeah, yeah robots, robots. And, and, and and parroting each other. Oh, they have to, no, yeah, uh, they're reading from a script. From a script, and almost everything is a trend to them. Almost every cause that they get behind was literally a trend, it right? Has no meaning to them. So I saw I that hypocrisy, and at the end of the day, I was just like, "Yo, fuck these niggas." You know what <laughs> I mean? Like I was like, well, "These people stand for nothing," and it's really, and not even just them. I mean, at the end of the day, when you look at the political system at its hierarchy, like at the top, it's just Democrats placating to victims right like that's it's you're selling two things it's you're either selling opportunity and self-sufficiency which i see from conservatives i identify as a conservative i i I work in for you know like as a volunteer for the state gop and you know working to get like you know minorities involved and then also doing some like you know cultural and political commentary but yeah what i saw was that self-sufficiency uh message and then the message of no, you need us. You know, we, you know, the government. You're saying, cons- good, just to yeah, clarify, cons- you're yeah. saying conservatives have a self sufficiency method, message. message that you, that resonate with you. That I identified with, right? Yeah. Um, 
And you're saying Democrats have a dependency. Dependency. Message. I think message. you and Kanye it's... might get along. Oh yeah, yo, <laughs> no, I'm, Kanye, this yeah. is real. To an immigrant, yeah. Yeah. self-sufficiency makes so much more sense. Oh, than here's my else. question though, and this is something I'm sure you've heard a million times, which is how can you be upset at dependence when you and a lot of your family members were dependent? No, on for sure. To no, of course, and, that, and that's a great question, right? Here, no, that's, yeah. that's a fact. That's a great question. And at the end of the day, is like if people give you the opportunity, it's what I say. It's like okay, give me a crutch don't give me like a wheelchair you're not gonna wheel me around for my entire Ooh. life right like it's like you give me some help you gr- you know give bring me, me up the ladder give me an opportunity right. and like let me finesse it out of there but if you're gonna say to me that intergenerationally that i'm going to be you know consistently dependent i mean look at what the government has done to the native american community they put them mm. in those you know goddamn uh, uh, reservations and that's yeah. it they say hey just you know yeah. We'll, we'll take care of you from there. And then also there's, you know, the, it's, it's a bit of a cliche, but they always, you know, point to the black community and what's happened, you know, since, you know, that they've incentivized black men to be out of the household. It's, you know, when you only are raised by a single parent, like I was, you have a higher statistic of, you know, committing crime, you know, not being as educated and, and obviously so there's outliers. How that? So, I mean, economic opportunity and just more so just kind of, not not giving the one option of just saying you know welfare dependency victimhood and again we're kind of broad brushing a lot of these you know things but to, to kind of give the fine-tuned message it's telling people that they they have the ability to kind of make something of themselves in a place you know leaving a place that they probably had nothing and living in squalor to now being in one of the you know like i have a huge patriotism towards the u.s even like i wasn't even born here not really a traditional nativist, you know, natural American, but adopting that. I'm just like, yo, how could you hate on America at the end of the day? You have all these people saying it's a cisgendered white yeah. supremacist. But don't you yeah. think that, let's just say, let's, yeah. the black community, mm-hmm. right? Since they have had, like, years and years oh, yeah. of oh, yeah. dealing with not, dismissing that not at all. just slavery, but Jim, Jim Crow. Crow. Yeah. yeah, and then, yeah. like, the Red prisons, lining, prison system or, yeah, and yeah, stuff, course, yeah. right? Like. Yeah. Maybe that's why they aren't like, yeah, America. No, Even though I have I have black friends who are Trump supporters and who don't no, of align course. with that. But yeah. No, I hear you on that. I mean, at the end of the day, like I honestly look to the black community as like having paved the way for a lot of new immigrants and new like, you know, what they call now new Americans having been here and that that's that's the story of like human struggle. Like there's nothing that's been easy. And I mean when you look at like slavery and okay, going back to the founding, right? I was having this conversation with a friend um recently People look at the founders as just like these old racist white guys who He's referring you know, to the founding fathers, the of founding America. fathers of the U.S. Right? right, and that they basically enshrined slavery and bigotry and their white supremacy in the Constitution. But people don't fucking know that after they got done with their mission of setting up this country and getting you know the British off their backs, they're like, okay, what do we do next? Ben Franklin, on the hundred dollar bill, you know what I mean? Benji, the big homie. Fucking made, you know what I mean? I'm not really that familiar with him that often, but, you know. But, no, uh, Benjamin Franklin pretty much made the choice to move to, back to Pennsylvania, where he's from, and he became the president of the abolitionist society. So, first, he's like, let me get freedom for myself and my country and, the, you know, the colonies, and then let me work towards giving freedom to people that I think have been enslaved. You know, so there's this bit, there's this been this kind of progressive movement towards freedom for all. And that's the essential you know, like idea that I get behind, right? So the bigger government you have, the less freedom the individual has. The more freedom the individual has, the more opportunity and like finesse that they can do. Extension I of Andrew's that. question mm-hmm. about you being brought to this country, being yep. kind of allowed in, I guess, for yep, lack yep. of a better way to say it. Yeah. Trump, your travel, boy, yeah, travel ban, yeah. letting less people into the country, yep. doesn't that completely fly in the face of what you're so thankful for? Yeah, I mean... That's a great question. So also, how do you reconcile, not that you no, can't sure. love Trump, but how do you reconcile those two? So that's the thing too, right? Like that's that's the other issue with, with a lot of liberals in the country when they're dealing with things on a political level on the mechanics of it, right? So when I, talk, when I say mechanics, I mean like the three branches of government right. and how the executive has, like the executive office has a lot of reach. And Trump can literally say through a pen, through an executive order, I don't want a certain country to be let in. And he uses national security to do it. I'm not gung-ho about the travel ban. I'm not happy about it. But I'm not going to say at the end of the day it's a Muslim ban. Indonesia has the most Muslims in the world, and they get to still come in because they don't have a, a, a scourge of ISIS and, like, terrorist issues. So, like, for example, Minnesota, until, like, right now when I flew out here, I could still use my driver's license. But on Feb- in February 2019, I can't because our system 
isn't as secure as like other states doing background checks and having that kind of uh, uh, infrastructure to do that. So, so what are you going to use to fly? Passport. You have to have a passport. Wow. Domestically. Right? What? My right? girl got to use her passport every time right? she flies. So, so to me, that – so I'm, I'm giving that as an analogy. So Minnesota and Pennsylvania yeah. require – a passport yep. to travel. Not a license Their wow. own admission that they're not vetting their people well enough. Exactly. The argument that he would probably make is Syria, is Libya, Yemen, Egypt. Or Libya yeah. or, or Egypt. Or Somalia, where are, I'm from. Somalia, which, which are way less structured and civilized. How are they going to possibly vet the people in the same way? That would be the argument right, right. that that side would I know make. You're not, right, and, I know. And, and not even that, just to even expand on that, when they have, you know, there's a huge migrant issue right now in Europe. What the French do is, well, the French is, you know, they, they're so secularist that they're like pretty much just trying to sanitize all religion, right? Like you can't even wear, I think if you're Sikh, you can't really even real, like wear the turban or is looked down upon. You can't even wear big crosses in France anymore. Or they've tried to do, they try to ban like the uh, burkini, you know, right, like right, so right. that like just like women dressing yeah. modestly at the beach was like no for that's them. Insane. Show right? some skin, pose. Yeah, that's, yeah. What that's pretty saying. much, you yeah. know, so there's, there's very like. Very Pepe Le Pew. Yeah, very Pepe Le <laughs> right? Yeah, goddamn skunk. <laughs> Oh, me too, right? Um, so, so I mean, so yeah, so with France, what they're doing now to deal with that issue of all these Muslims coming in, and some of them, you know, what happened with the uh, Paris attack with like 100 people got killed, right? Some of them were refugees. And now after that, what they've been doing is pretty much militarizing all the different Muslim neighborhoods and shutting down mosques and pretty much like um, exerting more force on these communities. So I don't want... A future where I mean they use that exa- so example. So you, the lesser of two evils is he wants to be Muslim freely. Like Trump said, yeah. let's figure out two, what the hell is going on. Yeah, that's pretty much what so the guy said. So you're saying, listen, that's I would rather if I had to yep. choose that yep. ban, the travel ban, yep. versus I can't really practice my religion freely. Exactly. <laughs> and not even that. I mean, after 9/11, it, I think there was like a Pulitzer surprise report by the AP that said, dude, like the CIA trained NYPD to spy on Muslims in New York City. Right. And they spied on not just Muslims at like, you know, radical mosques that they thought were suspect, sure. but they like spied on kids at Rutgers University but in the that's, MSA. I'll be honest with you, that's right? what the MIPD has done with organized uh, crime, with the mafia. No, no. They've done it with the Russians. They've done they it had with an incentive Jews. To... They've done it with Italians. So I'm saying this yeah. is a very normal thing for, sure. with, for the NYPD to, uh, to do is to yeah. spy on groups that they feel like they could potentially be dangerous. So uh, exactly. So a yeah. bunch of Italians that did absolutely nothing were spied yep. on. A bunch no, of no, for Russians sure. that did nothing were spied on. And Same I don't want to give them more yeah. reason by having members of ISIS who have said literally we're going to come into the U.S., we're going to come into Europe through the refugee program right. and then, you know, do whatever they think is, you know, in their mind, sure. a, a righteous so cause. here's something so I want to say. That's why I would support Here's something, something like I, 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 I want to ask you. And I, yep. because I think it's kind of unfair. The second everybody meets a Trump supporter, you're immediately put oh on God, the, it's, the it's, defense, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or they're immediately put on the defense, on you. Yep, uh, yep, yep. And you have to prove why you're okay with certain things. What nobody it's ends up asking, let, yeah. me, let me ask a question. Yeah. What nobody ends up asking a Trump supporter is, why do you like him? That was, it's yeah. always how, how do can you, you how do you think this way this? you as a exactly. you know who i get it from the most right like no uh, offense nobody, la- white yeah. women from they're white the women. fucking worst but yeah but let's but real quick because they're probably ugly all, they're probably not ugly here. white women <laughs> we're not here all day <laughs> i mean sorry very limited but... time go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. oh andrew come on we, we have very limited time right alex yeah very yeah, limited time i don't want to waste it so there's another podcast that has to come in here soon. Oh, we're, we're, so we're, if it was if we were here for three hours, I'd talk all fucking day. All right, go ahead. But I want you to give. I want your fair shot. I don't. I want you Appreciate to. It. So what is it that you saw in Trump and see in Trump? Yeah. That you like and support. What did it come down to? I mean, again, it really was. I mean, first off, the the premise of it was like the lesser of two evils. But I th- I think what I kind of uh, first off, I was supporting Rand Paul, right? A libertarian guy down the middle, talking about small government, getting rid of the you know NSA spying, all this kind of stuff you can get on board with. But Trump really kind of solidified that message of like, yo, the rest of the world is fucking screwing America, right? Like we, he first came out with this whole TPP thing, and it was just like, yo, if you want better jobs here, we got to figure out how China's you know pretty much raping us, you know, financially. Right. And, the, and, and basically we have NATO, the EU, we're like covering their military costs. And so the U.S. has become, in a way, under Obama has become this kind of, I don't know, it's like if you have your friends stay over for you and they don't pay the bills and you're just kind of, you know, feeding their lifestyle. Right. That's what the U.S. has become for the, the rest of the world. Vinny Chase. 
<laughs> there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, entourage. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Yeah, and 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 you got Mexico. You know, Mexico's turtle, pretty right, much. Right, you know right. what I mean? And like tortuga. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so like, yeah. Canada's you know? E. Yeah, right. Yeah, Canada's E. The fucking ugly yeah. fucking Why name and brother. Why do you think it's so? Why do you think it's, it's so, so taboo? Trent? No, I was gonna oh. say I was gonna talk about Israel for a minute, just real, because you're well, sorry, real quick. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just, uh, we haven't heard him. Why yeah. he wants? Oh yeah. So what sorry, is it that resonating? Go. No, I'm just resonating. Like the guy was calling out bullshit. I mean, like. One of the one of the most like beautiful scenes was when he was like talking down to a reporter, and he was like, the guy was like, "Why do you say anchor babies? Don't you want to say something that's like a li- bit more, you know, less harsh?" And he's like, uh, "Well, give me something. Give me something that is less harsh than anchor babies." He's like, "Well, why don't you call them the children of families who immigrate into the U.S. with undocumented access?" And he's like, no, "I'm just gonna say anchor baby. Shut the fuck up." You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, like the guy is just he's just he's and, and again, they, people say this all the time that he's you know he says you know what he thinks and he's a you know a businessman and all these different cliches. No, he he gets it. The guy's been living at this level in society dealing with these fucks these elite fucks who basically are getting rich themselves off of us and then dividing us on these social issues right like gay marriage and bathrooms and fucking the you know uh, uh, yeah the bathrooms right and like and, and, and immigration or or like shit like that they'll divide us on but at the end of the day it's just this kind of hot potato of power between the bushes and the clintons and the republican establishment and the democratic establishment and this guy said to both sides fuck you I'm gonna take over this country, and he has a genuine message. And people will twist and turn, and, the, and and to kind of you know pivot this conversation a different way. The reason why a lot of people see Trump as this a racist, bigoted, misogynistic, evil guy is because the Democrats weaponize that narrative in order to get people to like not support him, to get him away, and to get Hillary Clinton. And she had no message besides "I'm not a racist, bigot, misogynist, homophobe." Whatever. Her only message was "I'm not Trump." I'm yeah. not Trump. She had yeah. nothing else besides that, right? And so what they did is they saw communities who have been victimized and who have been, you know, uh, marginalized, and then they use that PTSD that they had. And it's kind of like you know, if you you know hurt, you know hit, hit your dog to teach them a lesson, you raise your hand and the dog whimpers away. They know what's going on. That's what the, Demo- the Democrats did with saying like, oh, he said this or he did that. So don't, you know, don't go in his direction. But I think recently they just polled uh, African-Americans and it's like like 36 uh, percent now favor the president. You know, and like Hispanics, I think Hispanics, it was like 25 percent of Hispanics voted for Trump. Thirty three percent of Asians voted for Trump. Why do you think it is that why do you think it is that um, immigrants aren't more conservative? I, th- I think because it really value is. value wise. Yeah. I mean, we've discussed yeah. this before, yeah. but value-wise, they're far more conservative when it Dude, comes I'm, to religion. Dude, I'm, I'm Muslim, Yeah. right? <laughs> I'm Muslim, the most cons- – socially, the most conservative people ever, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. And, I mean, Orthodox Jews are, like, right there with us yeah. uh, in the Hasidics. But, um, yeah, our values line up a lot with more so the middle America Christian family, right? Well, here's what I would say to you. Yeah. A yeah. lot of immigrants mm-hmm. – are conservative. They are. A lot of children a lot of, Indians of are, immigrants mm. are, are not are Democrats yeah. and liberal. Yeah. So how what happens within one generation? When you grow up in America, yeah. Yeah. you take for granted, and I, I, I'm the working struggle. on a bit about this, but your American privilege. Yeah. Yeah. You're so, because you grow up in this. So mm-hmm. I see white privilege because they get this thing I don't get. Yeah. You forget, oh, my parents came from a place that yeah. is far less privileged totally. than this. Mm-hmm. And then about, when you yeah. come here, you're like, oh, why are these people taking, I'm happy to right. be here. Yep. I don't give a fuck if you don't like me. Let me keep my money. But what Word. about the values? That's that's what I'm interested the, in. Why aren't those Some people lose the values. values passed down Sometimes to they the lose the values. Again, it's it's yeah. so it's so complex. It's it, it's going to be hard to put it in a concise way, but I really think it's, you know, there's this kind of cultural, That's this. there's this culture developing in the U.S. of victimhood, of you know, this soundbite culture that we have, this Twitter cancel culture, like all this is kind of coalescing into a very shitty society in the near future. Uh, uh, that, but yeah. just real Wait, quick, can I real, say this? Quick, here's, here's an example. An example, the hard work mm-hmm. example, right? Hard work thing, very conservative. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yep, yep. You, you're the people who came here, the immigrants who came here, my, our parents, whatever, yep. are the best of the best, the hardest working, yep. most ambitious right. motherfuckers on earth that got out of there. Yep. The kids don't have to be that hard work. They're not, they're not mm-hmm. born with the same gift in a lot of, in a lot of cases. They're yep. not born with that, and amb- so they're not gonna buy as hard into. But pull yourself kids, up by your bootstraps. But Indian kids are, and Asian kids are. 
So what what I'm fascinated by is like you have certain values do get passed down. Yep. Indian kids are hardworking. Yep. That's why they do exceptional in school. And oh, that's parents why they push them. Doctors, parents dentists. push them. Yep. Same with Asian kids, right? Same mm -hmm. with Nigerian kids. Maybe mm -hmm. same with Somali kids. I don't mm -hmm. know that many to say, but mm -hmm. there are these values that are passed down. Yet social values mm -hmm. seem to stop. Well, I mean, with yeah, the parents, you yeah. have it passed down, but it's more reinforced through Islam than it is more like so, more so the faith. Like I, you know, and I think what it is really is again, you're kind of adopting this American culture, which is like what I characterized a bit ago. But I mean, I, again, I, I can't really kind of boil down all the different things. It was a very gradual, like I was saying, like when I was in college, I just saw like all the different, like some some of the kids on campus were protesting these custodians getting fired, right? And there are these rich fucking kids from, interna you know, international cities or the East Coast and West Coast all picketing and, and yelling at our <laughs> fucking school administrators. Like, how can you fire these custodians? Like, all right, well, we're going to raise the tuition for it. Ah, well, you know, just don't fire them and don't raise the tuition. And they don't understand, you know, balancing a budget. And so these same kids will walk down the street in Somerville, right, Somerville, Mass, and say, oh, we're in Slummerville, looking down on blue collar you know, Bostonians or, you know, Americans and still see themselves as being progressive or, uh, you know, forward uh. thinking. Right. It's it's bullshit. And um, I mean, yeah, again, seeing that, seeing the hypocrisy, seeing the kind of handout idea from the Democrats who really give nothing. They, they, th what do Democrats have to win in twenty uh, in, in twenty eighteen? You in said the something interesting to me once, and I'm a lifelong Democrat, uh, but oh, I, I voted Democrat. I would say I'm more of a centrist. I'm literally in between oh, you and Effie. And, 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 no, and I'll say just before you say that, like yes. this guy is has never endorsed Trump. Even all the times I'm trying to like again get him to convert to Islam, or also you know uh, get him on the yeah. convert to Trump. He wants me to convert you know? to like the two <laughs> Trump hated Islam, people. Right? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Converts to MAGA. Pretty, uh, the, ma the MAGA, and then like he has the other you know thinking. <laughs> but but uh but no i mean like he's a democrat through and through so this alt-right andy stuff is like to me is like so it's surprising mama. make andrew muslim again yeah. <laughs> make andrew ma'am yeah, but, but um what what you ended up saying to me is because we'll get into these conversations definitely and your argument was this and i was i was talking about what i thought was maybe the importance of uh you know liberal policies in mm -hmm. certain times and what you said to me was very interesting you said name a single liberal policy that mm. empowers minorities mm. or one that, that one day they push on them the, they right? put the name the one that doesn't make them what is it make my uh make minorities like indebted or dependent dependent yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it, like nothing there's nothing that they're running on right now i but i yeah. couldn't yeah and i felt kind of shitty because my whole thing was i will pay more in taxes because i thought i was helping i was like i'll pay more in taxes i'm making money i'm gonna give money to the government hoping that it will help less privileged people this is what people so that they is, can yeah. be brought up and when you put it that way, which is, I can't think of a single, I can't think of a single platform that yeah. is empowering. No, I, I, I mean, based on like the trillions of dollars we put into our government, 64% of that goes into social, like welfare programs, like Medicare, Medicaid, um, like all, all of that. And all of that goes back to people who need it. And it's just like, if you say, oh, well, we're going to tax you more, that's not going to fix any of these issues. Right. Like the idea is growing the pie, not just continuously dividing it up as much as you can. So, I mean, again, it's such a complex issue to dive into. And it was, it was a very. <laughs> it is know, really funny that you hear liberals saying, like, how do we not even have health care? Yeah. And like new what immigrants in America are like, what's health care? Is that when you rub a tomato on your knee? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, more, we're a bit more advanced than that. Come on, man. No, I mean, like, that's what it is, though. It, 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 it is it's turmeric. We oh, turmeric. There you go. Yeah, I just mean? got onto yeah. it. Or just, we just don't have flavor. I mean, what we have is like camel milk. Just drink camel milk and you're fucking good. Uh, pretty all? much. It's yeah, pretty bad. Yeah. Cool, <laughs> Motherfuckers do drink camel pee. I've seen that like in like stores. Damn, you gotta be thirsty. That That's is so good, that right? is wild. But anyway, um, no, I mean again, it was just you know a, a gradual uh, change for me over time. I think it was yeah that I had all that. But now why, you're gung ho. You're why in. do you think yeah. that there's this like Trump hysteria? Because look, it's not like I like him. Yeah. But I don't wake up every morning like thinking about him. No, and I, mean, I know other yeah. people. Yeah. They literally think mainly, about him. The all saddest I've ever mainly seen. White York. upper middle class yeah. people yeah. that I know that are out here acting insane. This is this is why. Over this it. is why. This is why. It's because some of these folks, right? And again, I honestly I I respect liberal activists and progressive activists way more than I do people who are apathetic about the political process. Right? Like I, I got more respect for you that you got your skin in the game and you're like on these, you know, on these like campaigns knocking on the door and you want to get this guy out of here. Out you know? But what I see is they had this complacency that they were okay with under Obama, 
right? And the idea of getting Hillary elected was just like, all right, well, we got this star on Obama being the first black president. Now let's get the first, you know, woman president in there, and let's check off all these boxes, and everything will be okay. And Doesn't matter. She have to feel guilty. And anymore. we won't have to feel guilty. <laughs> we'll feel progressive. Everything is hunky dory. But they don't give a fuck about whether or not these people are fucking things up. Whether or not Obama increases the deficit. Whether or not Hillary Clinton, you know, pretty much gave a, you know admitted to supporting a coup in Honduras, which is why a lot of people from Central America are coming into the country illegally. They don't think about these things. All they want is this feel-good uh, 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 distancing of the of the issues for themselves. And then when they have Trump in there, they're, they're whipped up in a frenzy of saying, like, oh, my gosh, like, this guy is going to take away our health care. And Kavanaugh, if he gets confirmed to the Supreme Court, is going to, uh, you know, have Alice, Gilead. Uh, and it's all going to be fucking I Handmaid's Tale. I know, Alyssa Milano is handmaid. insane for that. <laughs> what she said. Bitch is crazy. She, like, took a picture in a fucking Little Red Riding Hood outfit and said, do not have, stop Kavanaugh, yeah. no Gilead. As if it's, anyone's no, going to fuck insane. her. insane. Like, as, as if anyone, as if we're going to end up ever living in Handmaid's yeah, Tale. People yeah. are crazy. If anything, the alt left is going to have us living in fucking oh, yeah. handmade scale. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because they're want, fucking crazier than anybody. They want anybody. anarchy. Oh. They want anarchy. They're they they say anybody. abolish profit. They say abolish ICE. Okay, that's like the big that's the big message from Democrats and like you have Alexandria Ocasio Ortez here in New York who knows nothing about economics. Right, like she goes on there and she literally. Uh, she's just I, cute, yeah. fam. She's, she's cute. cute. She's twenty eight. She's young, and she beat a fucking dinosaur Democrat who's like the number four guy in you know in Congress for Democrats who could have been Speaker of the House if, if he had won. Um, so so that's who they're pushing is this this message of hope and you know this nicety image, and um, the censorship stuff is the what censorship really scares is scary. me because that's what I feel like and I and I feel bad like saying like the liberals because that's not true liberalism. Yeah, right, sure. but uh, that's why I call it the alt left because I want to give it like a negative kind of you know. And you want to separate are, it from. Yeah. I want to separate it because they are really, they are trying to police ideas. They're trying yeah. to police. You if if you if I came out and said I support Trump, right? Mm -hmm. My life would be over. Oh yeah, you'd, you'd be the fuck you know out what of here. I mean? Canceled. Yeah. So and just for that simple thing, it's, it's like it's, it's wild. really kind of crazy. You know they they've they've kind of had this incremental growth towards authoritarianism right first i mean define authoritarianism to me i think and puritanism like yeah. it's just this weird there, it's a weird anti period. sex anti fucking to get i really want to get into the i don't know if we even have time to but the whole me too stuff that you were talking about and you brought up aziz earlier i mean yeah these people are, are dangerous the, the new puritans right and, and it's a weird sense of it where they establish themselves as the end all be all authority on what they can dictate as being appropriate, right? There's <laughs> you can't appropriate a certain culture. You can't appropriate certain um like you know, they say like again, going back to my times in school, a, a white guy would have an opinion, they say, "Well, you can't have that opinion. You're white. You don't know the experience yeah. of X you're a Identity. white man, you're also, white so man. you're evil, and yeah. anything you say is um, actually oppressing me yeah. because you're white and you're a man and you're part of the patriarchy. You could be like, "Well, I just donated my kidney to a black woman, so I mean, <laughs> what, does that mean that I, you know, can say anything?" Now they're like, "No, no, you know, close, but." So I mean, that 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 to me is what I see as being authoritative, right? So someone saying that they have the authority to say who can be on Twitter, who can be online, right, or who can. Uh, take part in anything and they also just like cut off your finances now is what they do like, i think there's a couple right wingers again i don't agree with a lot of people on the right in certain things but i still think they have the right to speak and talk about these issues mm -hmm. and now what a lot of people have been resorting to not just getting rid of advertisers is like no just cut off their paypal like cut off their patreon and that to me is we're heading down a very very bad path I think people have to fucking take a second back and be like, yo, 2016 happened. Move the fuck on. This guy Trump, whether you agree with him or not, he's not really that much different from what Democrats were standing for a few years ago. Hillary Clinton admitted in a, an interview on CNN in 2014, they said, would you uh, deport children you know, who came in with their parents illegally. And she was like, you know, she, she wrote her book, Tough Choices, and every fucking two minutes she would say the word tough choices. And she said, I would make the tough choice to deport little kids. And then like a year later, Obama passes DACA, right? Which Trump didn't want to get rid of, but he like he got sued by all these different attorney generals, Republicans, who were like, yo, you're the executive branch. If you don't get rid of DACA, which is unconstitutional, again, it's the political mechanics Democrats don't care about. They don't care about the fucking checks and balances that we have to go through. They just think DAPA was turned down by the Supreme Court. So, of course, DACA, the one that you know inspired it, is going to be turned down. So Trump was like, all right, fuck it. I give you guys six months in Congress, which is your job. Come up with a law. 
And then at the end of the day, I'll support it. But I'll support it only if you give me a wall so we don't incentivize more people to then refer to DACA and have this gray area that they're in. So, I mean, it's 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 really pretty much uh I don't think I'm ever voting times. again. No, I didn't I mean, vote in the last term. That was the first time I ever didn't vote because I was, like, very passionate about voting. I have yeah. to vote. At one point, I didn't have the right to vote. Mm-hmm. So let me. Why didn't you get nothing? Right nothing is perfect. Because I was, I'm a woman. I'm saying at You're one point. Thirty years old. I'm saying at one point. Oh, no, stop it! And, and, stop it! Stop well, it! No, it's true. At You're right. At one point though. in the 1800s, we didn't have the right. Let me tell you something. I'm voting just sucks. Saying. Yeah. Fuck voting. I passionately don't vote. Best yeah. thing about oh, voting day is God. me scrolling what? through Facebook, pretending y'all think your shit matters <laughs> when you live in Texas. Anyway, or I'm not really voting California. anymore. I'm done. No, Why? No. Don't tap out of the system. So tap done. out, girl. I'm tapping the fuck out. Tap well, out. Local elections are the most important. Man, it, shut the no, fuck up, No, no, no. No, no, Alex, no, Alex really is right, are. though. They really are. Come over here with your yo, facts. Yo, you know why local elections are fuck so are important right now? I'm from Minnesota. Guess who's running for our attorney general? I know they're important, but then you got to know so much Ooh. shit. No, Keith Ellison. Yo, you know how my dad... <laughs> Keith Ellison. We're going to get to Keith Ellison. That name sounds familiar. We're going to talk about that. But real, my dad taught me how to vote. Mm-hmm. In local elections, this is dead ass how he taught me how to vote. We went into the voting booth together, right? Mm-hmm. And he goes, he goes, Any money you see, no, you he see goes, it. you see this party right here? This is the Democrats. And then he just flipped all the switches down the Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> and then we walked out the voting booth. I was like, that's do you know them? Democrat. They're like, no, not really, but that's, they got good ideas. Yo, man, that's, I mean, that's kind of me now, dude. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I became an ideologue. I became, you know, it, it's, it's yeah, sad. You go a little bit but, too much. You go hey, too hard on it. Good. You got to go a little hard. But so Keith Ellison is running for attorney general of Minnesota, uh, and he just got recently endorsed by the Democrats. He is the number two of the Democratic Party, the deputy chair. He's, a, he's also a congressman. From Minnesota, uh, also a Muslim, district. also the first Muslim in and his Congress. Last name That's Ellison? a problem. We can't he's, have. He's, he's, no, he's a, <laughs> he converted. What? He no, he's he's a, he's a he's a he's a he's a black man joined Nation of Islam, and then oh. um, I guess now he's Muslim Muslim. And I don't personally, I don't consider Farrakhan or Nation of Islam Muslims. Uh, Damn. Right, really? To be real with y'all, of course not. I mean, Malcolm X didn't either. Yeah. Same people that bodied Malcolm X. Yeah. You know I mean, trying to like, co-sign him, and he said when he went to Hajj, he was like, "Yo, now I found true Islam." He's like, I prayed next to a yeah. guy with blue blue hair, and, you know, uh, blue hair. Blonde hair and blue eyes. Blonde hair and blue eyes and people from Asia, people from, you know, the Middle East. And that's, to me, true Islam. So is at the like end of the day, Malcolm idea. did like that blonde hair, blue eyes, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's at the beginning of the day, yeah. There you go. There you go. But no, I mean, so the same people that bodied him. So I don't, I don't really put those two and two together. They believe something different. They believe God came in the form of a black man, which is way different than our faith. We believe God has no form. You know, divorce from the universe is not in the universe. It's a whole, it's a whole anyway, theological thing. So Keith Ellison uh, is a Muslim through that way, and now he's running for attorney general. And uh, pretty much like two days, two or three days before the primary, he still won. Two or three days before the primary, he was accused of pretty much like domestic assault, domestic abuse by an ex girlfriend, and she didn't directly accuse him, but her son. Posted on Facebook, shit went viral overnight, and he said, "I found a video on my mom's laptop when I borrowed it, showing Keith Ellison dragging my mom out of the bed and like assaulting her." And again, this is the deputy chair of the Democratic Party, like right? second highest dude. He almost became the the, the chair of the party. Imagine Paul and Ryan had a video like that. Yeah, or pretty like fucking much. Like that pretty fucking I mean, much. If, uh, and just to parallel what you were talking about, Asia Argento, mm-hmm. Democrats are like, maybe we should wait for the evidence. Maybe we should may, – let's not rush the judgment. Maybe she's lying. And these are the same people that were going down Trump's throat with, you know, uh, uh, women who came out – I think almost none of them uh, had, you know, any claims of assault or whatever until the CNN debate where he was just like, oh, well, you know, grab him pussy. I'm sorry. You know, I'm, I'm sorry I said that or like when that video came out. So, so Keith Ellison has had in the past credible – I think there's like a police report, you know, that came out also recently. And now Democrats are saying, because this is a very contested attorney general's race, we have a governor's race, and we also have um, Al Franken's seat is up for grabs too. And Al Franken was one of those folks, he you know, a lot. Al does, Franken yeah. was grabbing whatever he could get a hold of. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, the guy was wild. Um, and so it just shows the hypocrisy of, of Democrats in that way. And that's why local elections are fucking It's important. Well, it's just important. So, I mean, know. if anyone had aligned themselves, look, I mean, Nation of Islam and Farrakhan, and, you know, he's yeah, they're obviously on Keith Ellison very with, yeah, with Farrakhan. vocal about disliking Jews of, yeah. and disliking yeah. gays. Mm-hmm. And if, if anyone had aligned themselves with the group saying that they were anti. Yo, Farrakhan is still coming at Jews on Twitter. 
I know. And and and, and he doesn't get kicked off of Twitter, no, but right but wingers Proud are. Boys, yeah, right. Proud Boys, right? Proud Boys and Gavin McGinnis right. and and all these all these and different. And they're both and, considered hate groups um, yeah. by Southern Poverty Law Center. Yeah, which is which is wild, which is wild. So all, all Twitter did was they got rid of uh, Farrakhan's check mark, right? And they, oh, and they don't. That what, that's all they that. did. That's <laughs> all they did. And he still has hundreds of thousands of followers and and people hang out. That's Farrakhan, yo. That dude a great speaker, bro. I've watched a few of his yeah. things. Like that motherfucker he's, is powerful. He's, he's a cult powerful. leader at the end of the day. He's a, he's a cult leader at the end Nothing of the day. Nothing wrong man. with that. Just no, one, I mean, one quick question. Go ahead. So you said Trump's your nigga. Trump's that nigga. That nigga. Yeah. I'm just I'm baffled because <laughs> you're a Muslim <laughs> Alex refugee Black yep. immigrant. Facts. This is and all true. All this stuff. Like mm-hmm. I respect the fact that you've only been talking about policy this whole time. Yeah. But how do you feel about Trump as a person? Trump as a person? The same dude that was on Home Alone 2, the same dude on Fresh Prince, the same dude that like we've <laughs> fucking known for like decades is now Bro, Trump has a picture of him with Muhammad Ali and Rosa Parks. I can't call that nigga a racist. I don't no, have I don't have I don't <laughs> Do I have a picture of Rosa Parks? Do you have a picture of Rosa Parks? You got a picture yeah. with two black people, you know? man. That don't make you not a yeah, racist. With the black people though. Rosa Parks, the come on, bro. Yeah, but <laughs> come on, bro. Come on. Don't play Rosa Parks like that, bro. No, but what I, what I'm saying is like Trump the person, you know what I mean? Like I'm not saying the guy is the most moralistic or whatever, you know, with like especially the the the, the women come stuff. On, everything. But I'm saying all right, what's one example that you would say? I mean, I, there's a list. The stuff you said about uh, yeah. Mexicans, um, Charlottesville, there's good people. Charlottesville is perfect. Charlottesville is perfect. Uh, Charlottesville, uh, yeah. Charlottesville is perfect. Go. And then right? we got to wrap up. And we got to we'll wrap up. Mexicans in Char- uh, Charlottesville. Go. Yeah. Well, Mexicans, again, what I mentioned. Go. Okay, Charlottesville, I will say, the, bi- the biggest issue with Charlottesville is that soundbite of him saying both sides, right? Yeah. Of him saying that there are very good people on both sides. Yes. Again, the media perception... Is a hundred percent the no? It's it's a, it's Just the game, it. right? So basically, what the guy was saying was during this debate on Confederate statues, they just tore one down like three days ago in in North Carolina. Um, basically, the idea is you can still support Confederate statues and not be a fucking insane white supremacist Nazi. It, you know, I don't agree with that. Nah. No, Doesn't I think matter. you can. I think you can. At the end of the day, I think it's Condoleezza, Condoleezza Rice, the first Black Secretary of State, said, "We're sanitizing our history if we're just tearing down things that we disagree she with." She also is the reason that fucking. No, no, I listen. And, listen. and the Iraq War for sure, you know, for sure. I no, mean, I don't agree it, with her I, a lot. I, it's like you have to draw the line. It's the, it's the Confederate shit is so fucking. The no. Again, you are the white woman deciding what everyone else. I don't give I'm a fuck. Not deciding, it's, I have an opinion. It's no, but you, white, you, you, I have an opinion. No, you can, no, for sure, it's and we can disagree on that. Own it. It's no, it's ugly. So it's, here's it's, the thing. It's immoral. Here's and, the thing, real yeah. quick, with history. Yep, it's not. People fucking always perfect. say this is a stain on our history. History is a stain. There's no such thing as looking back and finding something better than now. We're living in the best ver- way for it. Tomorrow will be a little bit better than today, and the next day will be a little bit better than that. When you go back, it gets worse and, and worse, worse and, and worse, worse yep. because True. history is a stain. We progress forward that's from bars. shit that's backward. That's bars. Progress yeah. forward, okay? So if you look back at history, you have to judge it within the context of time because that's what's normal. You cannot judge history when the con- within the context of now because it's impossible to tell where the future is going. Yeah, right? I, I, so yeah. back in the day when you're making a fucking statue, whatever. listen, I don't like the statues because I think they're treasonous. The one issue I have with the statues. That's my issue. You one, are treason. Yeah, you're, you're, you're putting you're, traitors in a fucking statue. It's disgusting. As an American, them. you shouldn't yep, stand yeah. for that, right? But – the concept of this person did something bad in the past and he has a statue. Was it considered bad then? Yeah. Is the question. So what, what, it doesn't what, what, matter. It's considered bad now. If there was a statue of Hitler up now, we would take yeah, the shit exactly. down. No, no, no. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. That, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. So here's the thing. Here's a different thing with Hitler. Hitler's regime. It was is a very done. short amount of time. Right? Hitler doesn't even short time. Hitler's yeah. regime is done. If Hitler was still in power, you th- Hitler's regime was still in power, you think there'd be some statues of him? And the Confederate South is done. Which is why I said it's treasonous and they shouldn't have it. Let me get yeah, this point yeah. off. This is what Trump literally said during that same press conference. He said, if now if we get rid of Robert E. Lee, are we now going to go into getting rid of George Washington? And freaking Angela Rye went on CNN and said, fuck George Washington. Fuck Ben Franklin. Fuck Thomas Jefferson. Get rid of them too. And that's where she lost 
the the moderate Democrats, even some of the white Democrats who are like, oh, well, you know, we love George Washington. I don't think we're going to. These people are too radicalized to then, you know, go into saying we can all have the conversation of when these statues are erected, which is right around Jim Crow, which means they were endorsing, you know, the old South of enslavement, which is disgusting. Right. But I'm afraid of then people having this kind of thing where they don't want to remember the history of this country, that it was ugly and they want to sanitize themselves and just basically just say to themselves, everything's hunky dory. And in the future, everything's going to be. I think fucking we should get bliss. rid of those statues and call it a day because yeah, that's, the black the it's not going to stop. The same neighborhoods have to wake up and fucking walk by and see those I, statues. I, I appreciate exactly. you saying that because they did a poll and like sixty something percent of black people in those same states were like, I don't give a fuck. Well, then if they don't give a fuck, then whatever. Because I am no, white, so no, no. There was I also a south. poll saying that Hillary was going to win by a No, no, I know Come polls. On, yeah, like, no polls don't mean something in, in certain nobody situations. Nobody gave a fuck. No, I that's grew what I'm saying. You, Texas. Yeah. Nobody gave a fuck about Confederate flags. Nobody gave a fuck about statues. I had friends Confederate flags in their garage. It's me, him, a, a black kid. We're all just hanging out. Bro, like, this it's is, just yeah. Yeah, it's maybe just a they're thing. ignorant to no, their the history. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Stop teaching history. No, I think that's the opposite. No, 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 no. This is what my point is. <laughs> so they this, want this is what this is what we're gonna have to do because the reality of the matter is you can't find me a person from a hundred years ago I don't know I don't give a fuck who you pick you cannot find me a person from a hundred years ago that could endorse. exist today you cannot endorse any man or woman a hundred years and ago to your point I hun- guarantee you I guarantee you there's not a single guy because well yes they might want to get rid of those statues you know how they might feel about gays you. Nobody, nobody. Drew, at, we're not listen. saying no one's. Everyone's yeah. perfect, though. We're just so, saying so, there are wait, 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 some wait, wait, things wait, that are the, worse than others. Listen, Slavery is just not something that should be honored. Well, Columbus should be celebrated. Did I, I, I want to respond to him. Just one mm-hmm. second. Worse. I want to mm-hmm. Look, look, look. Again, you're trying to rank things that are wrong in different levels. What we're trying to do is what is below sea level, right? We know. Right now, that slavery is way below sea. But that's the most fucked up shit. You cannot do that. But as society progresses, sea level gets a little higher. So right now, infidelity, it's above sea level. But them tides are rising, bro. And in 50 years, them tides might be higher than... This is- no, 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 no. No, because right now, you, you, right now, we know that it's wrong to make fun of the gay community. Right now, it's wrong. 15 years ago, when you were in high school, it wasn't. Because I was were- ignorant to it. I was ignorant to the fact that it's wrong to make fun of gays. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and then once I empathized and I learned right. that you shouldn't, then right. I stopped. Exa- All right, Exa- All right. Exa- that's what? it. But this has nothing to do yeah, with what I'm saying. slavery, yeah. genocide. Or what Trump like, said in that. Yeah. Like, so you stop think, it. All I'm trying to tell you is, remove slavery. Let's not even talk about slavery. What I'm telling you is we all agree that there are certain things that were acceptable in society. Maybe we're ignorant to them, yeah. right? And then after... You know, as time goes on, we become knowledgeable of them. We, so we both agree on that. So point. we lose our ignorance. Next point. Right. Right. Jenny. I understand your point. But I, do you understand my point? Which is what? That we shouldn't honor things that are so criminally wrong. What did I say about the statues? You said that we should take it down because they were uh, treasonous. Yes. Okay. So that's your reasoning for it. Sure. But if I see that statue, I'm hurt by it because they're honoring somebody who was in support of slavery. I don't know my ancestors, nothing from my past because mm-hmm. of slavery. Right. So I feel a different way about it than you do. Can I ask you a it's question? triggering. Can I ask you a question? Do you, do you believe that your feelings or that you're, you being triggered can then sanitize everything in history that you feel has wronged you or indirectly or directly? No. We should... I, complete, I, don't, I don't believe in honoring I, these I completely folks. disagree with Andrew. We yeah. shouldn't teach history we should know about history we should, we should learn know. from I was being sarcastic yeah. okay. I said we yeah. shouldn't teach but it. i'm just saying yeah. at the same time yeah. i'm not saying let's whitewash history yeah. let's um so forget about it but columbus l- what if that's triggering do we get rid so of it so you're not gonna let me finish no, my go, point please, go, ahead, go ahead go ahead i'm just saying we shouldn't honor yeah. things that are bad yep. back when hitler was during his reign people some people agreed with what he was doing yep. he had statues yep. and you know what the moment he was killed, the moment we won the war, we those statues were taken down. 100%, yeah. So why is the same thing not done yep. when we defeated the South? Well, I, in I, Europe, yeah. it's also a criminal act to talk about 
well, that's yeah, Germany. Yeah, to be yeah. Nazi. Yeah. No, it's not just Germany. Okay, fine. Europe. The whole EU. So I agree, that's I agree what I'm you. saying. I agree with you. I don't think they ever should have been scary. erected in, in the first place. 100%. So then we agree. agree. agree with you. But yeah. here's my question is, of course we agree. And if you listen from the beginning, you would know that. But you're arguing with me for no reason. The, the problem that I'm trying to address here is with what you brought up with Columbus. Columbus is also triggering for yeah. some people. Columbus also reminds them of a horrible history and why their family lives on reservations, why they don't get to – why there's – alcoholics and drug addicts throughout their entire family while their community has been ravaged they're triggered just like you're triggered by those statues but you're okay with that columbus thing being up there what happens i don't celebrate columbus day I'm i don't, you I don't... celebrate it okay you're i'm not just saying... saying take it down you're not saying rename columbus circle yeah, let me just get in on this because of the whole conversation i don't think the statue should be there yeah the so whole... let's get rid of columbus circle now okay. no no I'm, I'm just saying that okay so you see where i'm going right? no like... i do see where you're going okay. i get that mm -hmm. Yo, for the listeners, we're running in circles. The whole reason that's came up is because you asked me, how can I support Trump, right? Like, I, I get where you, try, you guys are trying person. to go. You're having this philosophical debate, but let's move the fuck on, right? Yeah. So you're saying, why the fuck do I support Trump for saying stuff like that? All I was saying was he made a really good point, which you guys were just debating, about if we get rid of Robert E. Lee first, what's next, right? Is it going to be George Washington, the founders of this country? He made that point. I agree with that point. I don't celebrate Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee even has a quote that literally says, don't fuck, don't fucking put up statues of me. Robert E. Lee said, don't give statues of me. And now we celebrate Abraham Lincoln, who said, I think there was a quote saying, you know, if I could, uh, you know, you know, keep this union together without freeing a single slave, I'd do it. And then Robert E. Lee, there's quotes of, attributed to him saying we should end slavery. There's right? also, so it's, for the record, there's a, a Robert E. Lee quote that he doesn't want statues. That's, yeah, that's what, yeah. yeah. I think personally, there's, an, there's a different view I take of those statues of that always reminds me I'm different. When I see shit like that, and I think that's important for it's me. It's an indictment on the it country. It reminds me I am not a majority in this country, and I will always be looked at as different. And for me personally, that's an important thing to ground me in who I am, who my where no, you my can't, roots are. You, you can't, you can't walk just, around. That's why I think I don't, don't need that slavery to no, remind me. No, no, for, I look at my skin. I get you, bro. I get you. And it's just like, are we really going to start then bulldozing the historical landscape of America by just getting rid of all the monuments? If so, fine. If you if people want to get rid of monuments that were erected during the Jim Crow era. That I agree with. You know what I mean? But then, again, what the president was saying was, if you go after George Washington, if you then you want to go after Columbus, that's a fucking snowball George effect. George Washington owned slaves, man. George Washington owned slaves. Thomas Jefferson owned and, you know, had relationships with slaves. Mm -hmm. but what I said earlier was, you know, Benjamin Franklin wanted to get rid of slavery and join an abolitionist movement. So what I'm saying is our history is fucking complex. It's fucking messy and it's not perfect. But if we try to, you know, tell ourselves that everything will be okay as long as we can erase it and erase the past and like act like no as if it was not there, that. I know you're not saying that, but I'm telling you, bro, 100%. The same people who are who just tear down that statue, there's already. I have the, to they, do this. they have a, they they literally. I talked to somebody who was at Columbus Circle, and she literally said that was our chapter organization. They tore down that statue. We're working on tearing down Columbus Circle. So that's the movement right now is mm. to get rid of the image, the historical landscape of what they see as white supremacy. Because so the you, historical landscape is de it's disgusting. It's, it's so what I'm, it I'm is. not going to lie. When I look back at the founding fathers, there's amazing things about these people that founded this nation. Amazing thing. And they're, they're, they're fucking disgusting human mm -hmm. beings. And if they live today, we'd be like, lock these monsters up. Are you fucking kidding me? It's disgusting yeah, within the can... context of this time. But we all live within the context of our own time. And it's way easier for me to separate that as a white dude. It's way easier. Like it, ten times easier yeah. for me to separate. We can have this conversation but about Confederate statues. Yeah, you guys you know have already. I mean? Yeah, I think we got to um, wrap up. We got to wrap it up because there's another podcast coming in. But uh, thank you guys so much for listening. And you know these conversations are always tough. Leah, thank you so much for being dope Thanks and a whistleblower yeah. and all this stuff. Thank Abby, you. thank you for coming on here and pleasure. You know, Couple brave souls here. For real, <laughs> whatever Very. you You're feel way about them. Than me though, I don't <laughs> know. I just don't give a fuck anymore. I don't know because they can't say shit about him. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> what yeah. are they it's not like say a white guy it? being like, I love Trump. Then, exactly. Yeah. Well, are you trying to shut me down? I'm a refugee. I'm a poor refugee. <laughs> 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 exactly, man. Well, thank you all so much for listening to Flagrant 2. Uh, yo, we're hopefully we'll survive uh, Burning Man. That'll be great. Uh, we'll have plenty oh, of time. You guys can take Molly and talk You're about... so lucky you got out of that. What? We <laughs> almost didn't get our tickets because Andrew missed the delivery three fucking times. They left a <laughs> slip. He didn't go pick up the fucking slip and they <laughs> sent it back to the goddamn sender. God. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> I want to go. I'm glad I got that. Uh, there you go. All right, we got to wrap up. We're 20 minutes late. Did you see what he just did to me? What? 
He erased all the good things about just, you? Yeah, he really did erase all the good things <laughs> that we did. But I recreated the history to make this <laughs> a fucking monster. That's all it is. Okay, all right, no plugs. Just plug next week. Okay, bye, bye, bye. Bye. Wait.